Good evening. This meeting of the Winter Town Council for April 7th, 2015 is now called to order. This meeting is being recorded and may be televised live. <coughs> you all please rise. Council Barone will be this I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. McKenna, before we move on. Yes. Good evening, everyone. My name is Jim McKenna, town manager, and I'm pleased tonight uh, to introduce our uh, newly appointed uh, library director, <coughs> Diane Walsh. Diane, this is our town manager. <laughs> Diane Wallace is a Quincy resident and is coming to us from the Saugus Public Library, where she served as the director there for four years. Diane has worked in some capacities in the library field for over 30 years, and as a director for the past 10, Diane started her library career as an assistant librarian at the Brockton Hospital Medical Library. While there, Diane also served as a public library representative of the State Advisory Council of <coughs> Libraries. Diane worked for the FCAT Library at Fidelity Investments, and in 2004, Diane became the director of the Bacon Free Library in Natick and stayed in that position until 2011 when she transferred to the Saugus Public Library as their director. Diane comes from a very impressive background and was highly recommended uh, as not only a librarian but also as a community leader. Our library board of trustees is thrilled <coughs> to have you come on board. I know the staff is thrilled and uh, I'm thrilled. So thank you for, for joining us here. I'd like to introduce the council to you. Welcome Diane. Thank you. Next week. Okay. Sounds great. Thanks. Thank you. Moving on with the roll call, please. <coughs> Councilor Calla. Councilor Sanford. Here. Councilor Boncori. Here. Councilor Brown. Present. Councilor Terry. Here. Councilor Biagia. Here. Councilor Delvento. Yep. Vice President Mayo. Here. President Gill. Present. Thank you. Moving on to the <coughs> minutes from March 17th, 2015, is circulated. Can I have a motion? Motion, motion. Motion by Council of the Terry, second by. Come on. Second. Please. Second by Council Vyajan. Mr. President. Yes, Council. Can we have myself abstain? I was not present at that meeting. Yes. All those in favor say aye. Right. Aye. Opposed? Council of Dovento has abstained. The me meeting is <coughs> March 24th as circulated. Motion. Motion. Council Terry, second by Council of Barone. No, Council no, President. That was the, uh, right, you the spring there. forum, so I'm yes. not voting on that. Second by Council Boyajian, Council Sanford, Boncori, and Barone were not in attendance. All, right. so all those who were in attendance say aye. And in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous with Council Sanford, Boncori, and Barone abstaining. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Presentation <coughs> of Powers and Sullivan for our external audit report. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you. Uh, I'm Jim Powers from Powers and Sullivan. Uh, I'm here to uh, answer your questions tonight and go over the uh, results of the fiscal year 14 audit. And sitting next to me is? I'm Dick Hingston. I'm the internal auditor for the town. Okay. Um, from an overview standpoint, I'd just like to uh, uh, thank Jim and, and, and everybody, uh, the staff, school, etc. Everybody's extremely cooperative in the, in, in the process of the audit. Uh, whatever we asked for, we uh, received. Uh, pretty timely uh, manner and, and I thought the audit uh, went very well. What you'll find is uh, if you took a look at like prior years management letters to the management letter this year, it has gotten considerably thinner, uh, which is a good thing. Uh, uh, management really takes uh, proactive uh, um, um, steps in order to eliminate any of the comments that we've had uh, relative to uh, improving internal controls and, and uh, making it a little bit more efficient. Uh, what you'll find is there's no material weaknesses or significant deficiencies and what we consider is the points remaining uh, just some other matters and, and even the, the several points remaining that will go over um, uh, substantially all of them uh, have either been completed probably in fiscal year 15 and Dick would probably be able to give you a better update than I uh, at this point in time or uh, are in process to be done either probably end of fiscal year 15 or, or fiscal year 16. So, uh, excellent results for the audit. Uh, 
Three reports that are part of the audit. The first one is the schedule of federal awards. There's a compliance requirement that if you spend over $500,000 a year in federal funds, uh, that the independent auditor has to do as part of a single audit and do compliance testing uh, and report back to the federal government to make sure that you're spending uh, their money in accordance with their uh, procedures and, and compliance requirements. Um, in fiscal year 2014, uh, we spent about a million six. In that, most of these are school related. Uh, and what the, you'll find with the report is that we have unmodified reports. We didn't have any findings relative <coughs> to either the financial uh, uh, accounting for that or uh, the compliance requirements. So uh, it's, it's kind of the best report that you can get relative to that. We don't test every grant. We test different ones each year. Uh, uh, and, but uh, we test a, a good amount of them as part of that. So that's a nice, simple report. If anybody had a question on that, I'd certainly be able to address it or be able to also. Okay. The next report um, that I'd like to go over, and again, uh, it's kind of uh, briefly, uh, there's a report on examination of basic financial statements. It's a thick report, and I probably uh, would like to guess you wouldn't like me to go through page by page. <laughs> I okay. can, if you want to. I am an accountant. I love this stuff. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Dick and I will look about, we'll just have laughs on that. Um, but the important thing you want to take a look at your financial statements. Uh, these financial statements are prepared in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles in the United States. You have different rules in Massachusetts on how you, in effect, get to free cash, how you budget. Uh, how you have your fund structure and the rules you got in that. <coughs> and then what happens is there's a series of additional adjustments that are made so your financial statements are comparable not only to every community in Massachusetts but to every community throughout the nation. Uh, and that will allow rating agencies or people that might be investing in your bonds, et cetera, to uh, evaluate your financial uh, position and condition and determine what your interest rates would be, whether they want to invest in you, and, and how healthy your uh, uh, your financial condition is. Uh, the best thing that you can have is an unmodified audit opinion and basically that's the only thing that we owe it, uh, own in here and you do have an unmodified uh, audit opinion. It used to be called unqualified, uh, now they change the words for unmodified. Uh, and what that means is these, we agree and we believe that these financial statements are prepared in accordance with general accepted accounting principles and all the required disclosures uh, in compliance with GAAP. One of the things that is happening, though, is GAAP is constantly changing. Um, so the standard <coughs> setting uh, board up there, the Governmental Accounting Standards Boards, are constantly issuing new standards. And, and uh, there's a couple that are coming up uh, in the next year or two. This year was an easy year from, from GAAP standards. Um, but I think you're prepared um, to implement those in the, in the subsequent year, in 2015. But as long as you maintain that those standards, that's important. Again, unmodified. The important things that we look at um, from, say, analytical is how healthy is your general fund. And realistically, the best way to look at that is the budgetary basis of counting. And that's presented in here. And what you'll find is that you have a uh, uh, pretty good budgetary results. Uh, you use free cash each year um, uh, to balance your budget but you're replenishing that with uh, revenue surpluses or turnbacks and expenditures, so you're managing the fund's wealth. Uh, you have enough fund balance in there that is healthy. You have <coughs> about a million dollars worth of stabilization funds, I believe, as of uh, June 30th, 2014. <coughs> Not sure what happened to them uh, this year. So you have some reserves and uh, set aside to maintain that financial flexibility. Uh, you're not a huge place, uh, so you don't need 10, 15 million dollars worth of reserves. Uh, it would be great if you had them, but you know, from a practical standpoint, I think you have sufficient reserves in order to uh, maintain that. But you want to maintain, uh, uh, from a policy standpoint, if you can keep about 10 percent of your fund balance uh, every year from operating, recurring operating expenses, that's a really good position because you can deal from a position of strength. Uh, a lot of communities might have a little bit more, a lot that have a lot less, and my guess is you probably had as bad a winter as everybody else did, <laughs> okay? <laughs> and so 
there may be some funds coming back in, depending on how the state works with the feds and what they can get approved, uh, which has certainly relieved the burden. Uh, but having a little bit more set aside will certainly help you uh, not having to cut back, et cetera. It might tap into your fund balance, which people expect when you have a winter like this. Um, but as long as you have a policy and a plan to replenish those particular reserves, um, I think you'd be in good shape. Um, biggest thing from the other thing in here, it's your unfunded liabilities from the GAAP standpoint. So your pension liabilities, uh, actually you're about 70% funded uh, as of like 12, uh, 31, 13, I believe it was, uh, which is a lot better than a lot of retirement systems out there. Uh, there's a lot that are under 50% funding uh, funded. Uh, so you weathered the storm from several years ago and, and have replenished that to a, a, a pretty good level, so I think you're higher than most. Uh, that liability that you have on there, that's one of the gap changes that'll hap happen in fiscal year 2015. <coughs> this is just a paper entry, but for your full accrual statements that are part of that, you're going to be moving that liability that now is just a disclosure onto your full accrual basis financial statements. Doesn't mean you have to change how you budget. You're going to still follow Mass General Law. You're going to follow uh, and make sure that you fund the pension according to the law and the, the <coughs> contribution will be set by the actuary and, and, and the retirement system. Make that funding schedule and you're on, 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 on track to fund the, the, uh, the unfunded liability. Change will be it's just moving that into now uh, uh, yeah, on a full accrual advice, national statement. And like I said, it's you're only putting in 30%, or depending on what the last, next valuation would be, it might be lower. Uh, market's certainly a lot better than the last time uh, the valuation was done, uh, but sometimes your expenses go up also. But that liability is going to be moving over to uh, the statement in that position. Uh, we will go over that <coughs> next year to see what it actually looks like. But, um, I think the amount that you'll have coming on your books will be less than a lot of our other the similar size clients uh, and they're all in the same position. And the other one is the other post-employment benefits, which is uh, the retirees, in effect, health insurance. Uh, you set up a, a other post-employment benefit trust fund, so you have the ability to, if you want to appropriate and set funds aside and restrict those funds in a permanent nature. Um, however, that obviously, if you do that, that affects your current year budget, and so it's just finding that balance and, and a plan uh, to start addressing that. You don't have to because it's not law. Pension is law. You have to fund that in a certain time period. Other post-employment benefits, uh, it's more sound uh, business practices to address that liability. The only thing that uh, what you'll find is that a lot of places are starting to do that on an ongoing basis, maybe putting a little bit of an appropriation in every year ratcheting it up as time goes on uh, because the rating agencies do look at that number and ask, uh, you know, and you can talk to Jim and everybody else, that uh, what are you doing about your unfunded liability relative to uh, uh, OPEP? That $62 million liability will come on your books in probably three years. Gasby's <coughs> phasing in each one of these uh, long-term benefits that uh, liabilities that you have in there. Biggest thing you just have to worry about, and I just I would just say that you'd want to have a plan to maybe fund that and look at that uh, uh, on a long-term perspective. This is a long-term liability. Nobody expects you to come up with $62 million in the next couple of years to all of a sudden put aside. But they may want to see, and the rating agencies may want to see you uh, with a plan. And then as long as you have a plan and you have policies in place, uh, and if you stick with that, uh, you'll look, look upon favorably. Uh, what you don't want to be is you won't want to be the last community in Massachusetts to do this. And probably it's about 10% right now, I'd say, that uh, funding those uh, liabilities with significant funds as opposed to just throwing some, uh, you know, $50,000 over there a year uh, that really doesn't make a difference from a liability standpoint, uh, but at least they're getting used to the fact that they're recognizing that liability is there. Um, so, any questions on the overview of the financial statements? 
Questions, maybe? How's it? Yeah. So, just to go back on a couple of things that you talked about, we were about what, 42, 43 million dollar budget? So, you would say, about, yeah. So, you'd say about 10% overall savings, 4 yeah. million, 4.2 million. With the stabilization number, funds and, and things like that. stabilization funds, free cash, just if you need that money. That's something that, that is considered, I believe, healthy, but most of the metrics I see out there, okay. uh, other communities have higher amounts. <laughs> but ones that have lower, have a, they have a struggle when something like the snow happens this year to mm -hmm. uh, not having to cut basic services in order, not, in order to balance their budget. And, uh, and you might have to dip into that, but hopefully you'll get a, a you know. So in light of that, we have a substantial shortfall in our budget for snow removal. Yes. Would you suggest overall it would be a better policy to eat that in one bite? Or de depending upon the amount, I mean, what would be some guidelines in, in, in actual figures? We have about a half a million dollars. We have about three million overall, I think, in the bank, give or take. We have a half a million dollars in this liability. Yeah. What would be a professional? Um, One opinion? of the things that I have to take a look at is fiscal year, you know, uh, 15's budget to see what you had in there, how much of free cash that you used, and project out what you think you have for the end of the year. What you don't want to do is. Uh, uh, you're going to have to eat this at one point in time. Um, is that projection the deficit after and the potential, after, after, after reimbursement? After budgetary figures, no. we're looking at about a half a mil. Right. No. 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 Not after no. the potential reimbursement. The reimbursement. Well, we're not, right. but reimbursement <coughs> isn't here. Reimbursement isn't here. So, right. uh, so I'm talking about real money right now, not, not a wing and a prayer. If right. it comes, it comes. A different yeah. situation, but if it doesn't come. Um, I, I would suggest that uh, some sort of blended solution might be the best way to, to take a look at it. Um, if you've got a half a million dollars, and again, it's more of just doing the financial projections going out. I haven't done that to see whether or not you have the room to do that. You don't want to be cash strapped for that. I know the DOL is thinking about allowing you a two year reimbursement um, uh, rate that you can take half of it this year, half of it the next year. But that kind of gives you a false uh, um, sense of security with what free cash would be certified at. Because if the DOI gives you, say, <coughs> 250 this year, I'm going to let you raise the extra 250 in fiscal year 16, uh, 17, I mean, you know, you do a 16 and 17. You know, who knows how your winter is next year um, when you get down to it. And, and if you inflate your free cash, what I would tell you to do, if, you, if your free cash is inflated by being allowed to postpone raising that, I would say do not use that free cash for anything else. Mr. Hickson, can Fish I just toss something in, Jim? Yeah. <laughs> One of the things that the um, DOI allows, allows you to do is once you know what your FEMA reimbursement is or an estimated amount, so if they're going to give you 30% or 40%, you can move that expenditure out of the general fund and put set up a deficit in the, into a, the, a special revenue fund waiting for the FEMA money to come in. So that And they won't hit your free cash for that. So that's one way to manage it. I don't think it's a good idea to push it out for two years. That's another thing that they're trying to let you do, raise it on the, and usually a deficit has to be raised on the recap sheet for the following year. Like Jim said, they're going to let you do it over two years, but, and not hit your free cash for it, but the bond rating agencies still look at it. And so a deficit is a deficit, and so you may have free cash, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to get you one, one way or the other next. And, and I think you're still all about maintaining your bond rating, and I think that's you know, a really important thing for you right now. So. Any further questions from the I, I have another question, but, but on a different subject, so if somebody else wanted to comment on that. Anybody else? I have Council a question. Uh, with respect to uh, unfunded liabilities, you said we're about 70%. What are, what's, how many community percentage-wise would you say are in a stronger position? Uh, I'd just say from a 70% funding uh, situation uh, for your pension, it's probably, I don't know, I'm thinking probably 20, 25%. If you go to the regional retirement systems, um, I think Middlesex is uh, about 50% funded, and they'll, they cover a lot of communities. I think there's you know, 50, 60 communities that are under a regional retirement system. So you're a lot better than a lot of other places. But I've seen a lot of 60s and 50s. Some have gone into the 40s. Um, How many 80s? How many? Uh, I don't do everybody, but uh, I think there's you know, probably maybe maybe 5 10% in the 80s. Thank you. And, and, and even a Wellesley that used to be 100, uh, their 
in the 70s right now because of the you know 2009 when the market crashed and they're just recovering to that point in time and they uh, you know you know well, one of the things that you guys do that um, that is better than most of the places is you have, I think, till 2040 to be fully funded, but you, your, yours is um, funding schedule is a lot shorter. I think it's 2034 or something. 2027. Yeah. yeah. So it's going to make you funded a lot quicker than most places. When yeah. And that gives you some flexibility in case you do have say a bad year or two, you know, you can make a decision to go from 2027 to 2030. Again, that's one of those things I wouldn't recommend unless, you know, you really, really had to do it. Um, rating agents will, will look at that favorably, that you, you're 2027. That used to be the old day, 2028. Mm -hmm. right? And then the legislature extended that because a lot of places were not going to make the 2028 and they extended it up another 12 years to 2040. Council Moncourt. Yeah, it, my questions are on the same line. Our pension program back in 2011, we were at 73.3%. Mm -hmm. Now we're at 69.9%. Right. Is that some kind of trend that we're going backwards on building this up, number one? And number two, our other post-employment pension problems where we're going to owe 62 million at some time and we're funded at zero right now. Mm -hmm. How much do you, should we be putting away to catch that up? And, you know. See, that's a, that's a, that's a discussion you really need with your, your actuary because you've got to build that in because if you set money aside on a constant basis that, you know, you've got an annual required contribution that, that goes in, um, from a funding percentage of where you are, to what's in your liability, your liability could go down by at least a third. That's 62 million to become 40 million dollars if you fully funded your annually required contribution based on the actuarial evaluation. So what you pay on a pay-as-you-go basis for your retirees' health benefits are credited to your annual required contribution, plus any uh, additional uh, funds that you set aside in that irrevocable trust. You now have a vehicle that's going to earn investment income when you don't right now, so that extra one-third is going to be made up not by employer contributions, but by um, investment earnings. And so the discount yeah, rate goes from 4% to maybe 7.5%, and that makes a huge difference in, in that particular liability. And what you want to do is have the actuary show you all of the different scenarios. What if we did this? How about if we made a contribution of $500,000 a year. What would that do? Well, $200,000 a year. And they would be able to track that out and give you uh, different scenarios of what would happen to the liability from a long term. And then all of a sudden, <coughs> uh, you'll build up that funding ratio, but your liability will go down significantly if you can fund that out. Council Mayor. So, on. Can I, were you looking I, for a number? I was looking for a number, and yeah. I also was looking for the, why we've gone from 11 right. Well, the pension to was, it was because of the market, right. right? The market decreased. It wasn't because the benefits went up or anything. You guys are, you're, they're paying in their nine, the new people are paying in 9% plus two, so they're, they're funding pretty well. But it's, it's the market, you know, that's, that's what happened for that. The, pen, the OPEP, it's a tough one, for, like Jim said, it's like, uh, if you look at, in the financial statements, there's a calculation that says the uh, net operating, um, the new the net operating obligation, and it tells you what you would have to pay in to fund currently and to fund on an annual basis for taking care of the unfunded liability over a 30-year period. Uh, it, it's probably a million dollar number, at least, you know, to, uh, say, to yeah. say, yeah. So it's a, it's, a, it's a big number that would just have to drop in on top of your other health insurance costs yes. to, get to, to get there. Council Mayor. It's a big number. So, so you unfortunately threw out the one number we're putting into that is 50,000. I don't know if you did that out of, you know, because you knew or you thought no, that, that was, was some benchmark for foolishness or... Well, know. what it is, it's a start, but it's really yeah. not going to significantly affect. If you, if you need to put, like Dick said, a million dollars in and you're putting $50,000 in, it's a start. But it's not really going to change the $62 million by that much from the actuarial standpoint because you're not putting in an, enough significant assets that will earn that 7.5% interest rate, you know, investment earnings over time. Uh, so your investment earnings are going to be a lot lower, <coughs> which won't offset what would be required from the employer contribution. 
and again, okay. that's the Maybe just one more thing on this. So they've made two gap changes that mm -hmm. reflect items that are going to be coming on extensively to the balance sheet. Right. Are there any other additional unfunded issues or liabilities that you can see them moving to to get more in line with gap principles? These are the, these are the last two really uh, major things that. Uh, uh, and unless Dick, you can think of anything. Those are the only two in the horizon. I see. I can't see. I don't know of any other ones that yeah. are, are of any magnitude like that that yeah. I already recorded. Yeah, so, well, this so when we talk about this um, unfunded <coughs> liability there, the 62 million, um, mm -hmm. what percentage of towns are actually making a realistic attempt to pay that? Uh, uh, you know, that million dollars a year or things like that that you're saying. Are there a large percentage of towns that are there's doing a, that? There's a handful. There's probably ten or so that I know of personally that are funding their act, uh, that are truly making the contribution they need to make based on the actuarial evaluation and, and, and sending that money into uh, that trust. And their liability was reduced significantly for that. There's also many other ones. It's probably another 25% of the, the, the clients that I see are making more than just a nominal mm -hmm. contribution and sit back and say, all right, we're going to use we're going to try to ratchet this up to 100%, but we can't start at 100%. Why don't we start at 25%? Sure. And then throw another 50,000, 100,000, depending on the size of the community, uh, obviously, it makes a difference, but from a percentage standpoint, and then bring that up over like a 10 year period to get to the point. And so what happens there is that instead of using a 3.5% a or a 4% discount rate, if you if you're funding zero, you can use a seven and a half to eight and eight percent, probably seven and a half. It's what everybody's kind of used from a long term rate. You'll have a blended rate that would go to maybe five percent, five and a quarter, five and a half, and as time goes on, you'll bring that up. So over time, you'll uh, and and again, the rating agencies do like to see that plan, um, and and they do like to see more than just uh, to get to get credit for that. There's a lot of other things that you do that uh, uh, they give you a lot of credit for. Um, you know, starting the pension side, because they look at both of it. If you're 70, 75 percent funded, that's a lot. It, it's still the same, really, population almost, mm -hmm. that getting both of these benefits. You can almost group them both together, except for the teachers are also on the, the, the other one, on the uh, health insurance plan. So if you really look at one, so, but you put them both together, and that's really your long-term liability. And, and so some place that might be funding a lot more in OPEB might be part of a, um, a county retirement system that's funded at 47 percent. And so okay. that dwarfs the other one. Thank you, Mr. Powers. Mr. Hingston, I think the, the report that, that you have given us has uh, summed up some significant improvements in our community and, and mm -hmm. the finances, and I would like to commend our staff for, for making those improvements and you guys for encouraging us and directing us. Thank you. Absolutely. And, and my, you know, when I got this the, uh, last week when we got emailed to us, the first thing I grabbed was the management letter because that's, <laughs> yeah, that's, the rest is, is all good stuff and yeah. hard work, but that's kind of where we are and what's going on. And um, I was kind of looking for more pages. Um, but it's good, which is a good thing um, that we, yeah. didn't, we don't have. But I, was, I was thrilled to see, um, especially the, the uh, school, the federal grants, uh, we came out very, very good on, yeah. which is a huge credit to being set up properly and getting things, getting things wrong. But I was, I was absolutely thrilled with the management letter yeah. um, on how things are going. And so, so I nice to tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Any further comments from the council? <coughs> thank you again, gentlemen. Thank and you. to our staff, thank you. Thanks. Moving on, but it's uh, after a very uh, cold, damp winter, and there's lots of dirt and trash around. We have a dedicated beautification committee here tonight to announce a kickoff of some uh, some significant cleanup events uh, this month and, and kicking off, although actually, Alan, we kicked off a couple of weeks yeah, back. Yeah. Alan Peabody and his wife Betty and uh, former counsel of uh, Richard, my brother, Richard Gill, are here to uh, give us a little update. Alan, okay. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you, President Gill, for having us tonight. A little history of the Woodford Beautification Committee is committed to creating awareness to improve the appearance of public spaces in town. 
Spirited volunteers come together regularly to work on projects throughout the community. As Council President Gill just said, uh, our most recent project was held on March 28th. The Beautification Committee, along with some citizen volunteers, spent an hour and a half picking up debris along Veterans Road. I sent some photos to Councilor Mail, and I think he's going to utilize his new screen over there to show us. No, nope. <coughs> that's, that's further on in the presentation. <laughs> Timing's not good. So. Go back to the uh, <coughs> No. no. This one? Right there? No fail? No. First one, probably. Back the very first one I sent you along. No, not today. That was a, sorry. No. Okay. There you go. There it is. Okay. That was from an hour and a half of work, four, vol four people, a little disappointed that only four people showed up, it was in the town manager's blog for volunteers, that was for a half mile stretch of Veterans Road, right there. And it was cold. It was snow. cold, okay. Um, if you want to move to the, um, the picture from today, Craig, I went by, I was driving by there today, I couldn't drive by. So this was just from, that's, that was from bolsters to the temple. Three bags, lots of trash. Okay. Millerfield? Millerfield. Millerfield. So in looking from Veterans Road over to Millerfield, it was embarrassing to look at underneath the stands over there. This wasn't from the winter. This is stuff that's been there all season. From the, whenever the athletics teams use this field, it's full of trash. I guess I would encourage maybe the athletic director to utilize his teams, coaches and teams to give back to the community, pick up the fields that they use, give back to the community that supports them. Um, there's another one with, uh, you know, I want to thank uh, Jerry Cooper for stopping by after our cleanup on uh, the 28th. There's a photo of Jerry and myself, and uh, we were able to throw the trash right into the trash truck right there so it didn't sit on the side of the road for the weekend. There's Jerry and myself. So, I would also like to announce that there's a group in town that is in the process of organizing a townwide cleanup on April 25th with a rain date of April 26th. There will be more details to follow. Uh, we've been in discussions with uh, Leslie Kafori, who has done some major cleanups in town, I guess, town-wide. But this cleanup will involve parks and areas around the schools and beaches, maybe get some the fields done. But I would also like the Chamber of Commerce to encourage their network of business owners to join the cleanup clean up around their businesses, business, their certain business districts on this day, and not just this one day. Do it, you know, go out and clean up in front of your business. I've seen business owners walk around, walk over trash to go into their business. Bend over, pick it up, sweep it up. If the guy next door doesn't do it, sweep it up a couple times, maybe he'll finally see, he'll see that he'll pick it up. So, you know, I just don't, a clean town is not just one day. Um, we're also looking for volunteers. We have a small group, we're an aging group, but we're an enthusiastic group. <laughs> so if anybody would like to join our committee, contact me, my name's in the book. I'm mean, going have a landline, they can contact the town manager's office, they have my email. And uh, that's about it. We do... Uh, just little projects all around town. And thank you to know he's helped us a lot. I think that, that pile of trash that showed um, on the Saturday before last, if we looked at it in a different light, it was Alan's pickup truck mounded. 
with trash from that, right, from that from one from collection. A half mile stretch of veterans. And, right. then, and then unloaded them. But I, yeah. I, I want to commend you guys for your enthusiasm and for your sticking to this over the years. Um, <coughs> and, and Betty, for what, as she walks, cannot walk by a piece of trash. <laughs> she walks in the lawn. It looks so much better without the trash. It certainly does. <laughs> and I, I would encourage all of us as citizens to take this day uh, and these days around it and then set the pace. But that particular day, let's all make sure the front of our own houses looks good. We sweep up around there. As Alan said, it's contagious. If you sweep up, so does the guy next door. And if you don't, neither does he. So again, Alan, thank you to okay. you and your committee. I also have a presentation for you, Peter. Uh-oh. Here you go. Pure. <laughs> you didn't have any gloves when you were there. I hope there's no ethics violations here by giving you a pair of gloves. Are these, are these $50 or more? No, no. <laughs> check, in, check inside. There's no bad. <laughs> I do have to say when I got home that Saturday, I had to keep the Right, right. Yeah, I was worried about you. So there you are. You have a nice brand new pair of gloves. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks again, Alan. Betty, and anybody else who wants to join us anytime, I can. Uh, we can always get eight more pairs. What you explain up there? Twenty fifth. Yeah. What time? I'm Leslie Capori. I've been at the She's this one here that's really. Then, you know, it's different than we are, but we're going around and they don't know how to organize it. They were just a while ago. They were the Winthrop Cares group. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, they, yeah, they do the annual yeah, sign up yeah, and everything. Yeah, they're going to organize it. Yeah, yeah. Richard's going to do something else we can do. Oh, yeah. Richard, yeah. Richard's going to do the, 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 the uh, Euro Beach on May 5th. Yeah, so um, also on the 25th is the uh, John Kilmartin pickup. Right on his path at the end of Short Beach at the same day. So, hope to see a lot of people there. <laughs> Thank you. Or else. Okay. Yeah. Or else. Thank you. <laughs> or else. Take it. Take it. We have three public hearings that we're going to move on to. The first one should be relatively quick, so I'm going to move to that one first. And it's that notice is hereby given that the Massachusetts General Laws the Town of Winthrop will conduct a public hearing <coughs> on or after 7 p.m to discuss the closing of Main Street between Cross Street and Payne Street from May 1st to December 31st. Is there anybody that would like to speak on the closing of Main Street from Payson to Cross Street for the period of May 1st, 2015 to December 31st, 2015? The purpose of that is for the construction of the high school. They'll be blocking Main Street, uh, blocking that portion of Main Street off that was in front of the old high school for that period of time. Does anyone wish to speak either in favor, does anyone wish to speak in favor of that proposal? If not, Mr. President, yeah. just to be on the record, Public Safety has met with the uh, construction company as well as the subcommittees for the school building yeah. committee. Um, and we feel it's necessary to expedite the uh, building and to not to run uh, behind delays and, and cost uh, the, the citizens of Winthrop more money <coughs> by these delays that it's necessary to close that street at this time, for that particular time period. Thank you, Chief. Anyone else care to speak on that closing of Main Street? If not, that hearing is closed. And we'll move on to a continuation of the hearing on um, the 60 Main Street SDOD. That hearing, just to give you a permit street. Permit Street, sorry. To give you a little history on what's happened on the uh, 60 Permit Street SDOD. In October of 2014, the town clerk received a petition from the applicant um, to, and was to be referred by the town council to the planning board, which it was on October 8th. On December 8th, the planning board held its public hearing. And on December 16th, I'm sorry, uh, on December 8th, the planning board held its hearing. on. On December 16th, they referred to the town council, got their planning board hearing materials back, and referred the petition to the Rules and Ordinance Committee for review of possible action on the situation. Rules and Ordinance as well as public safety. On the 4th of January, <coughs> the town council did not take any action um, at that point. But then the town council on the 6th of January held, held a public hearing, which was continued to the 20th of January. 
rules and ordinances schedule their meeting. The hearing was held and continued after <coughs> the hearing was held by rules and ordinances and continued till after the meeting, the town council hearing, till after the meeting with the developer. A second neighborhood, a neighborhood meeting with the developer. The neighborhood meeting took place, a second neighborhood meeting took place on March 12th, <coughs> followed by a joint meeting of public rules and safe, public safety and the rules and ordinance committee. And then on tonight, we have the final public hearing and a council vote. So at this point, to open up the um, hearing, the hearing tonight is on what the count, whether or not the council will <coughs> vote an SDOD, Special Development <coughs> Overlay District, for the area. As you know, the next process is the council does not determine the design of the project or the limits of the project. The, the council only determines whether or not the parcel becomes designated as an SDOD, Special Development Overlay District. And if the council does do that, then it goes back to planning board, and planning board approves all of the and recommends and approves all of the uh, conditions of the permit. Opening the public hearing, reopening the public hearing. Does anybody wish to be heard at the public hearing? Yes, ma'am. Could you identify yourself? Thank you, Dr. Hanson, 49 Herman Street. Are you saying that they get permission to do it and you can't tell us what they're actually going to do? Correct. Our function is to designate the property to, uh, to designate that the property can be a special development overlay district. Then it's up to the planning board to review their plans and grant them what they can what can be done there. That's a planning board power by statute, not a council power by statute. But once it goes to the planning board, the neighborhood has no say in Oh no, you definitely do. The neighborhood has input to the planning board as to what's what can be done there. So we'll know actually what they plan to put. Oh, for sure, yeah. And you will have input to the planning board as to what you think should or should not be done. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions on the public? I, I just will read a letter from um, Attorney Linz, who represents the, the uh, developer. I thought he was going to be here, but so apparently he's he tired. 745. 745. So all right. Um, we will. He said he's going to be here at 7:45, and this may be. Yeah, we're in the wrong. Okay. Well, we're. This president. Yeah. What I'll do is let me um, suspend this. We'll go to the other public hearing, and uh, should probably take us three or four minutes. And then, when Mr. Lynch comes back, the other public hearing is to. Uh, notice is hereby given in accordance with Chapter 40A of the Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 17, the Code of the Town of Winthrop, that the Winthrop Town Council will conduct a hearing tonight on or after 7 p.m. in the Harvey Hearing Room to transfer $30,000 from the sale of lots and graves to fund road repair at the Belle Isle Cemetery. All documents pertaining to this hearing shall be viewed in the Town Clerk's Office during normal business hours. If I can go back procedurally. We have taken the Herman Street hearing and continued it, and now I am opening the hearing on the cemetery. Then we'll go back to the other. So procedurally, we are opening the hearing to transfer $30,000 from the cemetery sale of lots to repair the road at the, at the cemetery. Is there anybody that would like to speak in favor of that? Steve? Absolutely. Uh, this is a, a section of the Bell Isle Cemetery uh, from the parking lot up to the rotary. It um, took, took quite a beating during the, during the winter months. Uh, curbing was knocked out. Uh, the roadway is unraveling, so we want to resurface that roadway from the, from the uh, <coughs> parking lots up around the rotary and add, add new curbing to, to the rotary as well. Okay, and, and, and to explain the reason of the transfer, at least correct me if I'm wrong, these are funds that must be used in the cemetery. There are cemet specifically <coughs> cemetery funds that can't be used specific elsewhere. Specific to the enhancement or, or repair of the cemetery. Does anybody else have a question or a comment? Mr. President? Yeah. Um, Council the, it was, was referred to the Finance Committee, and mm -hmm. we did come out with a positive recommendation to make the transfer from the sale of graves to the cemetery fund for the, for the repairs. <coughs> 
Any further comment? If not, we'll close the public hearing on the cemetery and move back, reopen the continued hearing on the um, 60 Herman Street. While we're waiting for Mr. Linz, I will read his letter, so save some time here. This was hand delivered to me today. Dear, dear Council President, as you know, the office represents <coughs> Ocean City Development LLC. It's my understanding that the Town Council may act upon the LLC's petition tonight to place 60 Herman Street into the Special <coughs> Development Overlay District as provided under the Winter Zoning Bylaw. When we last appeared before the Council, we agreed to continue the matter pending before the Council in order to permit further dialogue and discussion with the abutting property owners and neighborhood residents. On March 12th, Council of Verone hosted a neighborhood meeting <coughs> excuse me, where a number of residents attended. The developer made a further detailed presentation to the neighbors as to the plans for the property as was requested by Council of Verone. Specifically, the developer identified a number of uses that would be permitted as a matter of right including a piece, place of worship with six to eight parking spaces, a performing art center <coughs> under the unexpired pre-existing use with no parking, or a two-family dwelling with four parking spaces, which would likely be a rental property. It was evident from those suggestions that none of these options were desirable, which strongly suggests that an SDOD designation was appropriate and necessary to achieve a proposal that worked for both the developer <coughs> excuse me, and the neighborhood. As explained in the meeting in March, the goal was to find a project that could be ex meet the expected parking requirements under the SDOD, which is mainly driven by the total bedroom count. Accordingly, the developer put forth several options that were most economically feasible and, unlikely, and likely to meet the needs of the neighborhood, including proposals for four units, that is four two-bedroom units with nine parking spaces, five units, three single bedrooms, two two-bedrooms with nine parking spaces, and six units, all single bedrooms with ten parking spaces. <coughs> Based upon the size of the above units, these three proposals represent the optimal unit size for targeting a condominium market, something that was important to the overwhelming majority of neighbors present, i.e. that these condominiums, <coughs> these condominiums versus rentals. As part of the presentation, the developer did consider a three-unit project. However, as a three-unit project under the SDOD would have a number of unfavorable characteristics, it was not considered a viable option. First, based on the available <coughs> square footage, the units would be considerably larger and contain four bedrooms at a minimum. Second, the parking requirements a little typo there, Richard, sorry. <laughs> Under the SDOD capping, out of two spaces for two bedrooms or more, a three-unit parcel require only six parking spaces, regardless of the number of bedrooms created. Lastly, with the existence of a very limited market for such condominiums, it would be a high risk that a model would slide toward a rental project or a roommate arrangement, as opposed, by the home, as opposed to a home ownership project. Each of those factors were not acceptable by most of the neighbors present. Accordingly, that idea was not considered feasible. Based upon the feedback of the neighbors as to what was acceptable and unacceptable, the developers are committed to a project that meets the following criteria. A, maximizes the parking space to the bedroom ratio. B, minimizes the unit size that is best suited for a condominium arrangement. And C, ensures that the impact of the neighborhood remains minimal. With these objectives in mind, the developer is willing to commit to the town council and to the planning board that if, if an SDOD is approved, they will not seek a special permit to request more than five units with a mix of two bedroom and three bedroom and three one bedroom units or <clears throat> more than four units with a maximum of two bedrooms per unit based on the foregoing and all of the information that is made part of the record to date. It is respectively requested that the council adopt the petition of Ocean City Development LLC to develop the property at 60 Herman Street as a special development overlay district. Thank you in advance for your consideration. Very truly yours, Richard Lynn. I went ahead and read your letter because we started a little bit early. Thank you, uh, Mr. Produce Attorney Lynn's representing Ocean City Development LLC. Thank you, Mr. President. Three of the members of the council, I apologize for, for my tardiness and I thank you for uh, accommodating me at this uh, later time. Um, as the letter indicates, um, uh, since we were last before the council with respect to this petition, um, we have had the opportunity 
uh, to meet not only with the, uh, the rules and ordinance subcommittee, but also with the neighbors uh, as the letter outlines and defines. I think the issue that is before the council this evening is whether or not uh, this site is, it's been the same issue, uh, whether or not this site is appropriate for SDOG designation. Um, and based upon some of the concerns that were raised uh, by various councillors as to what uh, this plan might look like. Again, as I've said previously, although there is no obligation for us to uh, demonstrate at this point in time how many units we intend to uh, construct at the site or uh, to, uh, how we intend to arrange uh, the units at the site, uh, we felt it was feasible based upon Council Verone's um, uh, recommendation to uh, try to figure out what uh, would best fit here based upon concerns of neighbors and, and the needs of the neighborhood. Um, I think a few things were evident as indicated in my letter. Uh, a rental project at this site is not something that is feasible. Uh, the current use or the, the most immediately past immediate past use of this, this site for a performing arts center is likewise not feasible and not something that the neighborhood wants. Uh, in a place of worship or a church arrangement, all three of which would be <coughs> um, uses that would be permitted as a matter of right uh, were all immediately determined to be not feasible for this location. Accordingly, the only way that development could happen here for something that uh, was more feasible than what the neighborhood uh, wanted with respect to what could be done as of right uh, would to be designate this under the SDOD. Uh, that leaves the question, what would that look like? And I think we did a pretty good job and made a compelling argument as to why uh, four or five units uh, at this site works best. And the reason being is uh, at that number of units and with the number of bedroom uh, count uh, being what it was, we were prepared to uh, make a commitment to do uh, up, to up to five condominiums with an arrangement of a mix of two and one bedroom units uh, or four condominiums with two bedrooms, uh, all of which will drive and dictate the number of parking spaces that would be required. I think I've indicated in the letter and certainly we made uh, this very clear at the meeting with the neighborhood that <coughs> if this were a three unit under the SDOD, it could have as many as 12 bedrooms. Um, if these were not condos and were a rental arrangement, 12 bedrooms could conceivably be much more uh, by way of cars for parking. We wouldn't be required to have the number of parking spaces uh, on site since we'd only have to be, we'd only be required to have seven parking spaces total, uh, but you could conceivably have an arrangement <coughs> where we had 12 people uh, living in a roommate situation in the building that uh, uh, certainly was met with uh, resistance and an option that clearly would not work. It doesn't work for the developer either, and the reason it doesn't work for the developer is they're not in the business of creating rental property, they're in the business of developing condominiums. And the market, uh, and I'm sure anybody who's in the business would tell you that the market with that size condominium uh, certainly doesn't appeal to a larger or a broader audience when it comes to trying to sell condo units. You know, the sweet spot, so to speak, is somewhere closer to the 1,000 or 900 to 1,200 square feet as opposed to the higher, higher size units. And that's why we set on four to five units as being the optimal amount of units uh, for this development. Uh, with that said, I think it needs to be made very clear <coughs> that the council has two options. To vote to grant the SDOD and allow the planning board to then take on the responsibility of determining what this development will look like, or not vote the SDOD and determine what, you know, let, let the developer determine what can happen here by right. <coughs> we don't want to do anything here that's uh, the, the not what the neighborhood doesn't want, including we don't want to make it a place of worship, we're not interested in a performing arts center, and we're not interested in a very large two-family at this site. Uh, with that said, they do own the property and something has to happen here, and something has to happen with respect to uh, whether it's, it, it's capable of returning anything on, its in, on their investment, <coughs> or the property then gets sold to, a, to another party, and, and who knows what's going to happen. So I think there's an important crossroads here for the council, and I think it's important to realize that you know, we've done what we think is a good job at trying to listen to the concerns of the neighborhood and come up with an idea that we think works under the SDOD guidelines. And we respectfully request that the council consider that in passing on the question of the SDOD designation. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Again, to, to uh, reiterate, our function tonight and the function of the council throughout this process is to, deal, is to determine whether or not the property will be placed into a zoning known as SDOD, Special Development Overlay District what the actual plan, uh, once we either approve or disapprove, if we approve, the plan is that then the, the planning board decides and determines, working with the developer and with the neighbors, exactly what takes place there. The SDOD 
vote that we take tonight, if it is in the affirmative, doesn't necessarily say two units or 12 units. That's, that's the plan, not, and I know I'm being ridiculously extreme, but that's the planning board function. However, it is a public hearing, and anybody that would like to have any other input tonight to the council, we would appreciate. And uh, does anybody have any? Yes. yes, Alan. Just your name and precinct, please. Alan Furlow, 171 Lincoln Street. The only thing I'd like to say is um, you don't really, nobody knows once it's built. Mr. Lynn's addressed the situation of roommates and et cetera. You could have five units, you still have roommates. It doesn't mean nobody knows who's going to go in there and who's going to have a roommate. Okay, so when I was asked at the last meeting what I thought would be fair, I said a three family was my opinion. And I would think if you put in three units and they were really nice units, in today's market dictates a good price, people are going to buy them, people are going to use them, uh, maybe a married couple or whoever, whoever does this. But I don't necessarily see someone going in and spending whatever the market, I think they were talking it would be 300000 plus for a unit, all done up like that. Mr. Polino was at the last meeting and kind of went over some numbers for us. Maybe three, three fifty. So I just don't see someone spending that kind of money and then bringing, you know, renting it out or something like that. So that was just some of my concern there. And one other thing on the parking, if I may add, I guess they said if you look at the building, the, the driveway would be on the right side of it as you're looking at it, and there would be parking around the back after they put up the retaining walls and all that. I have a concern that if you, what if one car's going in, it's one way, and one car's coming out. And now you're trying to back out, who's trying to back out? And at different times of the day, there are school children there. So there's, it's just so close to the school, there are some other safety problems to be considered with, with five units. Thank you. That's what I have to say. Thank you. Anyone else like to be heard? Mr. Polino. Yes, I'd just like to say. Jim, just give you a name of precinct, sorry. Jim Polino, resident of Winthrop, business owner in Winthrop. And precinct? Precinct five. Thank you. Sorry about that. I'm really rusty. <laughs> I just want to say I'm not a neighbor, and I do uh, listen to their concerns, and they're all legitimate concerns. But one of the things that I think, if I were a neighbor, that I'd be asking myself is, who's buying this building, and can, can they be trusted to improve the neighborhood? And that I can speak with some experience on that. Uh, the developer uh, I know has done approximately 50 of these types of projects in the town in their career. And I can tell you that in every situation, they've been able to sell the, the, the property um, more than what I thought they would have sold it to. And a lot of that's sold it for. And that has to do with the type of construction that they do and the work they put in. And I also have to say that in every instance, they've taken a rundown building, some structurally unsound, and made the property viable, made it attractive, and made it um, worth, increased the value of the neighbor, the neighborhood's, uh, the neighbor's property. That's been done consistently over and over again. And I want, I want you all to go by, if you have any questions on that, to go by 9 Fawn Bar Ave at the end of Winthrop Shore Drive at the Rotary. There was a two unit building there that was structurally unsound, dilapidated, in an area where condominiums may be sold 250, maybe 300 if they had an ocean view. The developer took that building, developed it, and selling those in the mid fours done a wonderful job, enhanced the whole uh, Beacon Circle, and enhanced every neighbor, every, every neighbor's home, so that they in turn be able to get more value on their property. So that's really what I can speak to. I, I don't want to address the neighbor's concern. I don't live there, and I think they do have the concerns. But one of the things that you can be sure of is that when this project is done, if the developers allowed to have enough funding and and sale price is enough to, to allow them to create something special there. That's exactly what they'll do because they've done it 50 times before. Thank you, Mr. Plano. Anyone else wish to be heard? Yes, John. Yes. Um, John, I know I've asked you before, just your name and precinct. John Patel. Thank you. Um, our main concern as, a, as the true of others is there's an obvious land court, uh, land issue that um, I don't know what to say. It's an issue that on their plans, there's um, approximately 833 feet of property we're, we're using now, they have put in their plans in order to get their parking situation 
for the SDOD. Cur currently, um, we're in the middle of filing a adverse possession case with Jim Cipolletta to get um, for, for that land that's 833 feet. So it's not a little land that they want to take that we've, we've been using for 40 years. So I don't know how this can pass uh, go forward. It should be postponed to this land issue is is taken care of um, because it, it, this land issue has a big impact on the SDOD. Um, and as council, I would think it's hard for the people and not just the financial gain. I, I don't know what the whole financial gain going forward with, the, with this issue I have, you know what I'm saying? Um, it, it's just a, it's a, it's a burden on us that we weren't aware of until we looked closely to the plans. We weren't notified that, you know, the land was getting built on that we've been using for 40 years. I mean, we, we bought the house with the fence there, granted, you know, you know, we used it for 40 years. So in turn, we had to file an adverse possession case, which is being filed right now. So I, I don't know how that ends up. If it does pass, and then whenever the case is closed, we are awarded our land back, what happens at that step? Okay, thank you, John. Any further? Would you answer, Mr. Lester? May I respond to uh, Mr. Yep. Preston? Um, so I'll take them out of order. With uh, respect to Mr. Cataldo's concern, first of all, there is no adjudication or court order relative to any adverse possession claim. It is, isn't as obvious as Mr. Cataldo likes to suggest it is, but more importantly, adverse possession is a title issue that involves uh, boundary disputes between neighbors. It has nothing and no impact on this council's action. In fact, the council should be cautioned to take any action that may favor Mr. Cataldo in that respect based upon his allegations of adverse possession. There is nothing in the bylaw in the SDOD or the zoning bylaw that permits this council, the zoning board, the planning board, to take private action or action that benefits a private landowner based upon an alleged claim of adverse possession. And therefore, I think uh, the issue, although Mr. Cataldo feels he has a claim and he's permitted to take whatever claim he wants uh, to whatever court he wants, uh, really has no place in this forum and certainly has no impact on this council's decision as to whether or not an SDOD should be granted or should not. In fact, uh, if the council were to take that into consideration, I think that would be improper. And I think any decision rendered that was adverse to my client based upon an adverse possession allegation uh, is one that uh, would, would give rise to certain judicial remedies that we would have. So I would just want to put that on the record as well. Uh, with respect to uh, us building on his land, I think we've made this clear in previous, um, previous uh, presentations. Um, we've had a, a professional land surveyor survey the land. We're confident where our boundary is located. If Mr. Cataldo feels that there was a boundary dispute, he has a right to bring a claim. He can bring that claim any time he wants. Uh, as to whether or not that is disposed of favorably or unfavorably to my client, again, has no impact on this board's decision, this council's decision, uh, with respect to the SDOD. Uh, with respect to Mr. Frulo's comments about roommate situations, I think we um, pretty much exhausted the concern that uh, it's more likely that when you have a very large unit that is unable to sell on the market, it's more likely to become a rental unit. And again, if my clients are holding property with very large units and a large number of bedrooms, the risk of it becoming a rental is much higher than as opposed to a smaller uh, arrangement or programming of the building. And in this particular case, I think by us laying out two bedrooms and one bedroom units with the goal that these sell as condos would make them more feasible to sell as condos. But more importantly, I think the fact that uh, you'd have a multiple number of units in the building uh, where unit owners uh, would be, I guess, interested in ensuring that home ownership continues uh, would have sort of some, some level of self-governance within the condominium association itself. We also committed to the neighbors that we would include uh, when we drafted the condominium documents uh, a provision for owner occupancy or to encourage owner occupancy. Uh, under current guidelines for financing, uh, it is necessary to have owner occupancy, especially a new condo conversion. You'd have to have at least 50% of the units owner occupied in order for financing to be available. So it's in everybody's interest to have these <coughs> the owner occupied units. And that is the goal of my client. And that's why uh, four to five units works the best. Uh, three units, and I understand with all due respect to Mr. Frullo, he wants to suggest that we consider three units. Let me make it very clear. My client has no interest in doing three units here. 
We cannot do three units. It will not work at three units. Okay, thank you. Any further comment? If not, before we close the public uh, hearing, I'd just like to read the purpose so everybody knows exactly what we're talking about as far as an SDOD. Purpose of the Special Development Overlay Districts are to encourage the redevelopment and reuse of existing non-residential properties in a manner compatible with the surrounding neighborhood or commercial areas and to prevent the disinvestment deterioration of non-residential buildings that have become obsolete for their original purposes by allowing other economic issues, including but not limited to residential uses, to protect and enhance the value of real property and provide the regulatory flexibility to achieve the foregoing. Is there any further input, public comment? If not, just if I could add to the record that uh, just I know that's been mentioned before, uh, but the planning board unanimously recommended to this council that this SDOD designation pass, and I just think that's also an important feature. The unanimity of the planning board doing so, I think, uh, should weigh heavily in this board's decision, this council's decision, uh, with respect to the vote they take. Thank you. If there is no further comment, public hearing is closed. Moving on. Public comment. Thank you. Thank you. Seeing none, correspondence. It's a busy month, April and May. We have, uh, last week we had the uh, presentation on the Winthrop Spring Health and Wellness, wellness uh, issue and Council of Boyage, and you want to just give us a quick update on that? Yes. Under new, when we could get up to new business, I yes. just do have a communication on it. This Family Fun Day is uh, down at the, the uh, Gorman Fort Bank School. Um, Sean, would you want to comment on that? Yeah, I just know we're doing it a uh, fundraiser, our uh, yearly thing, as soon as our third year doing something in the spring. Uh, and this money is going towards the park at the Fort Bank School Handicap Park that Mr. Fabiano has been working on with the committee very hard. So it should be a great day, and uh, hopefully we get some support down there. Very proud of what, what our Parks Committee has done over the last two years, and this Fabiano playground is really a, 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 a tremendous thing. And, and uh, so we would appreciate any support. It's at the Gorman School on Saturday from 12 to 4. Rich, you can put that in as part of your thing. Yeah. We also had a communication from the Massachusetts State Lottery referring to a request um, that for the captain's quarters at 550 Pleasant Street that they wanted to um, put in a keynote to go product um, and that was a concern as to exactly what it meant and the casino to the keynote to go that was a slip of the tongue wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> the keynote to go is is very similar to a scratch ticket you go into the store you buy the keynote to go ticket there is no board we were thinking keynote is like you see in a, in a store or a restaurant or a bar where they have the big thing on the wall and they watch the keynote play. This is not, if we've been assured by the, uh, by the game, by the lottery commission that this is not that. This is exactly the same process as you do when you buy a scratch ticket, except it's a keynote ticket. There is, no, and in order to collect on it, you bring it back to a facility and they determine whether or not it's a winner. So there was con some concern. We also don't have, according to the, they already have a, a uh, Lottery license there. The town doesn't have any control over lottery licenses. That's a state project. So it becomes sort of a non-issue. But I did want to at least bring up the fact that we did receive a letter stating that they were going to do that. And we do have it under the business. With uh, cleanup day, the Friends of Belle Isle Marsh and DCR will sponsor a spring cleanup, as Alan mentioned earlier, uh, at the Kilmartin Path on Short Beach. On, in Winthrop, Saturday, April 25th from 9 to noon, meeting at the parking lot. Refreshments will be provided to the volunteers. The Kilmartin Path is the walkway from the parking lot to the pedestrian bridge at the new park at Short Beach. If you've not visited the new park yet, <coughs> please come and help clean the area and enjoy the great views of Belle Isle Marsh. You can see all the way to the Mystic Tobin Bridge from the, from the scenic overlook. The park has opportunities for viewing wildlife, snowy egrets, great blue heron, several species of diving and dabbling ducks and so forth. So it's another piece of the, of the uh, spring cleanup day. I also just received a letter from Mass Development to Finance that they will be considering the approval of a revenue bond for financing <coughs> the project being undertaken by Hallmark Health System located in the cities in this attachment. They are having a public hearing and they are considering making some investment 
at the 52 Crest Ave Medical Building. Um, and if anybody would like to attend the public hearing, it's tomorrow, short notice. Uh, and it's... Twelve o'clock at the 99 High Street. So, if anybody would like to be there, you're welcome to go. That's all I have for correspondence. Unless anybody else on the council. Moving on to public comment, uh, we had no public comment. Appointments. Appointment. Uh, I'm going to appoint uh, Matthew Crombie, who is the who is filling in uh, the vacancy at the high school pres at the present time as the high school appointee to replace Ms. Bellostock, who has uh, resigned from the high school to serve on the school building assistance committee um, until the expiration of June 30th. And could I have a motion to affirm this? I'll so move. Motion by Council. Second. Terry seconded by Council Del Vento. There's no discussion. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Committee reports, Council <clears throat> uh, The Committee on Committees met on April 2nd. President were myself, Council Mayo, Council Boyajian, Council President Gill, and Town Manager McKenna. Um, we went through our annual reviews. Um, what we do is we have the Town Manager perform the review of the Town Clerk because we feel that the Town Manager has a more um, more interaction with the town clerk on a day-to-day -day basis than we would. Um, so he reports that recommend the evaluation to us, which was a positive, <coughs> a positive evaluation um, on the town clerk. Overall, all her duties were being performed admirably. Um, and we talked about some areas of progress and some areas of opportunity, uh, but overall it was a very positive evaluation. Uh, we then went on to our council clerk to do an evaluation on Denise. Uh, which was extremely positive in all respects. Uh, but we, what we did do with that is we don't have a formal a formal evaluation process and a formal evaluation tool for our council clerk. So we are having a subsequent meeting on April 26th, which I'll talk about in a minute, and one of the agenda items there will be to create a formal evaluation tool for the council clerk. Um, we then went on to our town manager review, which um, is a form that we have filled out over the past several years and um, I send out the form electronically to the council and they return it and then we compile a compilation of those evaluations and discuss with the town manager um, his report card so to speak and the recommendations that we received the the evaluations were, went very well very positively um, Town manager expressed his views as to his vision for the future of the town. Uh, we recommended um, to enhance some of the evaluation tools that we had to try to have uh, to work on with community relations and such. Um, but the town manager overall received very positive scores. Uh, if you're grading scores, it was the best evaluation he's received in his time here. Uh, and we're very pleased overall with his efforts. Um, also on that, during that committee meeting, we actually the town <coughs> council president has been very much in favor, which we concur on, on having a, a meeting with all the committee members. Uh, as far as all the committees we have in town, which are several committees, to go over the process of how viable they are, how, what, what they're actually doing, what their mission statement is, and to come, with us, come to us with a report of their progress. So we are conducting a meeting on April 22nd. Uh, which has been posted for the Committee on Committees, in which we will be sending out invitations to all the committees that the Council has purview over. And we will be asking them for a report, mission statement, um, how often they meet, and, and what they've done over the past year. Um, so that will be held on April 22nd, and I believe it's the time is 7 o'clock in the Harvey Room, April 22nd. Um, and that's it for that committee meeting. Thank you. Council Boncori? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I suppose you had, yeah, there were, we had three meetings between the Rules and <coughs> Committee and the Public Safety Committee. And uh, the first meeting was held, was the Public Safety Committee meeting, was held at the Senior Center on uh, March 30th of 2015 at 7 p.m. Uh, Councilor Cal 
conducted the meeting, and I was present as a member of that committee, which made up a quorum. Uh, the, in attendance were all the public safety people, numerous members of the council, uh, numerous members of the school building <coughs> assistance committee, people from Gilbane explaining the need and the situation of the closed uh, Main Street from Payson Street to Cross Street. Uh, there was one neighbor who was present, Virginia Brown. She represented the neighborhood and had comments and uh, gave those comments. Uh, it was voted at that time by the committee to bring a motion to this committee under old business to close that street, and we'll do that under old business. That meeting lasted an hour. That meeting was not adjourned, but recessed to the following night to a joint meeting of the Rules and Ordinance Committee and the Public Safety Committee. The Rules and Ordinance Committee met first on March 31st uh, at 7.03, present with myself and Councilor Del Vento, which made up a quorum of that committee. Also <coughs> present were Peter Gill and the uh, Public Safety Chiefs. First issue discussed was the self uh, houseboat issue. It was the second meeting of the houseboat issue. Uh, numerous people <coughs> from uh, the Atlantis Marina spoke. Numerous people that live in the Atlantis condominium spoke. Uh, there was a motion to recess and have a third houseboat meeting on April 15th. That motion was made by Councilor Del Vento and seconded by myself. Uh, at that April 15th meeting, we will be having uh, town council there, uh, town harbor master there, and we are going to ask that a letter go out to each of the dock masters from the different yacht clubs to be present to give us their uh, feelings as to what needs to be done to develop a waterfront houseboat bylaw. That meeting was adjourned, and a joint meeting of the Rules and Public Safety Committee. Uh, was called to order at 7.50 p.m. I chaired that meeting and co-chaired it with Linda Calla, Councilor Calla. Present were uh, Councilors Del Vento and Councilor Boyajan, which made up a quorum of that six-member committee. We needed four members to call that. Also present were Councilors Mayo, Gill, and uh, <coughs> Fire and Police Chiefs. Uh, the issue before us was Sixth <coughs> Street. Uh, we had heard from uh, John Catalo, who was one of the neighbors on his land issue, uh, and informed us he was going to court with the attorney simple letter uh, and attempted to get an injunction. Uh, we heard a motion was made by Councilor DeVento to send this matter to the council with no recommendation of the committee. Motion was seconded by Rich Boy Agent and it passed two to zero. Uh, the motion was made to adjourn and the meeting was adjourned at 8 10 p.m. Uh, however, a motion will be made under old business to vote on this either one way or up or down under old business. Thank you. Uh, yes, uh, could you just add the Harbor Management Committee to your house vote? Uh, to invitation. Yeah. Yeah. Jim, did you get that? <laughs> yeah. Okay, um, Council Del Vento. The Finance Committee met on April 2nd, 6.30 here in the Harvey Room. Adjourned at 6.30. Um, present were myself, Council Boyage, and Council Letieri. Also present were President, Council President Gill and Council Vice President uh, Mill. The first motion was um, on discussion was the $30,000 from the sale of graves, the cemetery fund for cemetery road repairs. That was voted with a positive recommendation to come to, to, the, to the council. And the second item was for the $15,000 for digitalization of town records. And that was referred back to the original maker of the motion for clarification of policy and funding source. And there was some confusion as to if we can have the Council can order the town manager to implement something for the town clerk um, without a solid funding mechanism, which would be required to be voted later um, for the actual amounts. So that was just sent back for clarification and a rewrite. And the meeting adjourned to 650. What time was that meeting over? 650. Any other 
reports on the committee. Council <coughs> two. I just have a question for Council Boncori on his report on public safety. Yeah. Um, the meeting at the senior center, you reported that a positive recommendation on the closing of the street between Payson and Cross. Was there also another recommendation that came out on extending that you made a favorable recommendation on as far as extending the um, the time of the late night work? Oh yes, we already voted. Yeah, that. We had already voted that. Yeah, he okay. said. We voted that that night. Okay. Yes. So that's done. Any further committee reports or questions on the committee reports? If not, Mr. McKenna, tell me. Yes. Good evening. I'll try to be brief. Uh, I know we have a long agenda. Um, I. Uh, I'm pleased to report that the East Boston Neighborhood Health Center has started engaging in their efforts to uh, address the matters that came up as part of our health study in terms of asthma and COPD and the implementation of the Massport grant. They have hired Meredith Hurley uh, under a stipend to begin the initiation of that effort uh, through her office and they are uh, looking for space in, in Winthrop and are uh, proceeding with plans um, to, to open up a health center. So um, I'm, I'm pleased that uh, that engagement has happened. Uh, there seems to be a good working uh, rapport with uh, the town and with East Boston Neighborhood Health Center. And so it, it looks like that process is, is underway. Uh, national grid representatives, the Vice President Dave Gendel and uh, our regional representative also came out last week to discuss some concerns regarding some aerial uh, wire and uh, particular poles and some issues in the town, double poles and the like. And um, they uh, took a, a field trip with uh, Chief Flanagan around town to look at some particular uh, issues that the chief had. And I believe there's going to be some progress coming uh, forthcoming from them to address some of these issues that we were, we're aware of. And they were happy that we made, made them aware of some of these issues, particularly the ones on Shirley Street, which they agree need to be addressed. Um, the, uh, we'd like to announce the uh, $30,000 grant uh, that was uh, obtained through the efforts of Chief uh, Del Hanty and uh, Joe Demolovitz uh, from a public safety uh, state office uh, for $30,000. We'll be installing video cameras in the police vehicles. Chief, you want to just give a quick comment? Well, um, came from the, uh, the Byrne, Edward uh, J. Byrne grant. Uh, for police equipment, the maximum was $30,000, and uh, I think the award for us was $29,970, uh, to be exact. I, I think we rounded up to 30 for, um, for ease of comprehension. Uh, these will be video cameras on the mountain of the dashboard of each cruiser, uh, also facing rear to the uh, prisoner um, area of each cruiser, uh, and they'll record uh, on activation of lights or emergency sirens, and they'll have those triggers that will activate those cameras. Um, and then stay activated and record these events. Uh, this is something that we we'll put the unions um, on and have full discussion before implementation. Uh, but we just received the, uh, the award letter yesterday, so um, the official letters will be coming in the next couple of weeks and it'll give us time to prepare for them. Thank you, Chief. I was joined with a number of my uh, uh, area managers and, and some uh, mayors from the area cities to speak with Governor Baker last uh, week on storm funding and the progress of, of that conversation he's had with the White House. Um, he asked us to all get on board and, and start encouraging our congressional uh, leadership in the, and delegation to, uh, to uh, petition the White House to release those funds under the three storm consolidated request that he's made on our behalf. Um, we also talked about the regional public transportation system and the issues um, that, that, that we're having. Um, the report coming out this week, and uh, we bantered about a number of issues you know, regarding financing and the, and the tough conversation that needs to be had with respect to how we're going to improve our public transportation system uh, going forward. And we discussed uh, the impact that opioids was having on our communities, and uh, he was particularly impressed that Winthrop was leading the charge with Chelsea and Revere on our efforts to uh, um, regionalize our strategies with respect to uh, that issue and the progress we're making. And so we'll be preparing a report to go back to the governor on that issue. Um, 
and we discussed livery services and the uh, issue of needing to have some standards with respect to um, the uh, quarry background checks and the safety standards that livery services of any sort need to comply with in order for people to know they're, 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 they're going to be safe in using those services. And it was an excellent meeting, and uh, we're, we're, we're to have more going forward. And uh, I think uh, the governor was very plain spoken with us and, and enjoyed uh, talking. You know, coming from a municipal background, he's very sympathetic to our, our challenges, our budget issues. Um, he kept his promise on local aid. Um, and, uh, you know, I think, uh, I think he's got some frustrations with respect to issues that uh, he's looking at in the state budget. And he's going, he, I, I believe he and his team are going to really roll up the sleeves and, and take a hard look at, at, at the way the state does its business and, and try to be innovative. And um, so it was, it was a good conversation. Uh, <coughs> tomorrow I'll be meeting with uh, Speaker DeLeo to discuss uh, a few projects and get some updates to him on our Winter Street Corridor petition to see if where that stands, um, Miller Field and Lewis Lake dredging. So we've got a lot of requests into the Commonwealth right now. Um, and uh, certainly the speaker is our strongest a advocate and uh, um, we're looking for a good conversation about those issues. And I'd like the CFO to give a quick update on where we are. Sure, just uh, things uh, you know, get to that point in the year where we're looking to move uh, some um, funds around within the general fund to close things out. So there's a few motions in front of you uh, tonight and then uh, there are a few others we have uh, in, in subsequent meetings. Uh, we have Jim's salary reserve line that we need to distribute out. We've already calculated which departments, what departments need for the uh, current year uh, COLAs. Uh, we still have the, the uh, Essex County, I, I think I briefed in the past that there was one additional student there this year than what we got billed for. So that's about $21,000. Um, and uh, I'm still working with Hess. I know I've talked to you about Hess, the uh, gas that we uh, we, uh, they claim we owe them some money and um, negotiating trying to get that down to something that, uh, that uh, we can settle on. So uh, more to follow on some financial motions, but overall the general fund will close on the right side of the ledger, so that's good news. And uh, that's all I have, barring any questions. Thank you. You all set? All set. Thank, Thank you. you. I have a couple of questions for me. Right. So um, first of all, um, I should thank John Massero. He sent out a note a couple of weeks ago um, trying to help us get some people for the IT committee and I was wondering if you could put it in your blog too because it would be helpful so I'll send it along to you. Uh, there are a couple of questions um, on harbor operations and this is really you know how, do, how does this get done so we have a boat that's sunk in the harbor right now mm -hmm. and we do we need a rule and regulation that addresses that do we have the appropriate capabilities to handle that right now? Yes we received an update from uh, our harbor master department on that on Monday. Uh, good news is is that doesn't pose an environmental threat at the moment, mm -hmm. um, but we're still examining that. And it, you know, if, if we identify something there, we'll have to take steps uh, to boom it. The the uh, owner of record has been notified, and they <coughs> have to come out and be compelled to deal with it. And if they don't, then after a certain period of time we have the right to go forward and, and because of safety issues and uh, environmental concerns uh, <coughs> take whatever steps we think are necessary. It may be that we don't want to touch it at all given that we need to take an inventory of what's, what's there. So uh, a very, it's a delicate matter that we have to proceed with some caution on to make sure that we don't inherit a liability by trying to do the right thing. Um, so we have to make sure that uh, the owner of record takes responsibility, and, uh, and if they don't, then we will proceed with any recourse we have uh, to deal with it. See, because my concern is that we don't have the right, you know, like we're sitting there right now, we don't want to touch it. We, and, you know, I don't know that we ask voters if they have a certificate of insurance to cover that type of thing. And, and if we go out and, and we pick up the eight or ten thousand dollars it's going to cost to yank it out and the person's not a citizen of the town then we got a boat that's been underwater and i can't imagine that the eight thousand dollars of salvage would cover the boat and i just didn't know if we had the right well, rules in place the state so. plays a role in this you know because this is not the first time this happens you know and they have resources in, in cases where these 
situations occur in the waters uh, where they may come out, lend some advice, some assistance, and uh, you know we may have to seek some some of their guidance <coughs> on it before we touch it for the right very reasons you're talking about because we don't inherit the liability that comes with it. All right. So, is it possible to coordinate with the DPW with the harbor to get them? some help and I'm sure they pay for it but they need some heavy equipment to they get some stuff that's floating down there there's some floats and that's kind of I, don't I know understand if they talk the harbor masters have a have a you know have made inquiries on the on the vessel right. and will be following <coughs> to me and and who would make but they also have some inquiries about you know who can use the shower so they find a lot of times five minutes of closing and people come in and in in terms of the ferry showers is that a public room that anybody can use? Is it for a specific group of people? Is it their responsibility to set up their own rules? You know, six that we close at seven. You, you know, who who, who, the who, who does that? Let's move been. that back to the Harbor Management Committee. I don't think it's appropriate for us to debate and go back and forth. We're not debating. Bargaining. We're trying to find out who's the appropriate person. Turn it back to the Harbor Management Committee. Right, we'll move that, on. Is that, that, you know, I, well, I, I have I have a couple of other things. Sorry, that's that's what's here for. So, um, what what uh, one? I, I know in the past, and it's budget season, I know in the past we've talked about the fact that, and you even mentioned it in your spring meeting, that we're, um, that we're the, the training team for Massport in, in terms of the fire. And is it possible to get some type of agreement with them that if a, you know employee is taken before we get a chance to amateurize their their you know funding that we put up? Funny you should mention that. Just tonight I inquired with uh, the chief because I myself am thinking of along those same lines mm -hmm. uh, and having a discussion with the speaker tomorrow. I wanted to pose a question uh, that might uh, be something we could we could discuss with the fire chief uh, about looking at some reimbursement for training in particular uh, uh, because of the, this this issue. And just one more thing I saw on, on, I think it was the Beacon or something came out from MMA today about the opportunity for our um, employees to get some type of grant that was like 23, 2400. I don't know if you had a chance to see that yet. But for, is that for the professional development? I think so, yeah. Yes. And it was some Fridays and yes. they take it. And we it was have one candidate that's looking to apply uh, for I that. Just, all right, yeah. I thought it was a great um, yep. opportunity. So yep. appreciate Any further that. questions for the manager? I just have one quick question. Yes, go ahead. <coughs> Any update on the beach as far as the sand? Is the sand done? Because I've had a lot of people mm. talking to me about that there was a lot of rocks used yeah. at the Highland End, and you know, people are saying they ran out of sand. People yeah. are saying different things. Can you just give us an update if it's going to be an update today? To take my own look at the situation, and uh, clearly the cobbles are very apparent, and it doesn't look like much of the beach in certain sections. So I appreciate the general concern there. One would have to think that more sand has to go down in order for it to be stabilized. <coughs> and I'm sure this winter took its toll on the beach. And then I believe the DCR understands that they may have to come out, in fact, and, and replace what was lost and take a measure of where, you know, what this winter really meant to that beach and re engineer or stabilize areas that may have been affected. All in all, the reports are that the beach performed extremely well. Uh, so, what, you know, substantively that beach works now. Uh, I think aesthetically and uh, certainly to accommodate, you know, the other uses for that beach, you need more sand. <coughs> so I, I, I would think that they would come out and, and, and dress it uh, as it needs to be dressed. Can we just get an update on that? But yeah. Okay, thank you. Any further just questions for the manager? Yes, a quick one. And it's the box with, with this, the snow removal. What do we have for a plan to get rid of the stuff that we've left on there and how soon do you think we can get on those fields? Ingleside Park notwithstanding, <laughs> because that took a particular severe hit this year. Um, Sean and I drove around to all the parks today and uh, I'm happy to report the parks are better than I certainly thought they would be. Um, there needs some, to be some wounds stitched uh, on a few locations, but all in all, they are in good shape. Uh, Veterans Road needs some healing, uh, and they've got some snow still on the on the surface. And I believe over the next couple of days, with the rain that's coming and, and warmer weather, you'll see that uh, snow uh, melt. And Calla uh, <coughs> and his crew have uh, already uh, designed a, you know a, a plans for addressing uh, the surface of that of that facility. So so that's to come. Um, you know, Coughlin looks good. Uh, Pond Street looks good and uh, Hannaford looks good, and uh, Crest Ave, 
but for a couple of minor, you know, uh, issues, looks pretty good. Ingleside is going to need some serious attention. The, 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 uh, but um, I've been in instructed that, uh, you know, they're going to go out the grader and, and do, do what they need to do to tidy it up and uh, replace some, you know, loam and do some seeding and do the things they need to do to bring it back to where it needs to be. And that'll happen over the course of the next few weeks. Okay, thank you. Any further questions for Mr. <coughs> Not moving on to the school department update. Um, Mr. Masiro and Mr. Crombie are working together to, uh, for the rest of the school year, running the uh, the operation at the high school. The, uh, as we know, the high school principal had resigned, so they've uh, they've stepped up and, and as a team working together for the rest of the school year. <coughs> Hats off to our cheerleaders um, who became national champions. Uh, as we all know, a great great accomplishment. Uh, Council Boyajian is going to speak about the Wellness Week, which is part being run as, as part of the school. He's going to speak about that later on in the meeting. The girls' basketball team came up with an impressive record of 20 and 6, uh, capturing the Northeast Conference champs. Boys' hockey captain was named uh, Pat Tedisco was named a Boston Herald All Star. The um, the advanced elementary band, which is brand new, is moving on to a competition at King. Regional, King Philip Regional High School. Things are going along with the schools in a, in a nice fast pace, lots of athletic stuff, lots of drama stuff, and academic stuff. So uh, we, we like what we're seeing. Under, oh, under old business. We have a motion by Council Boncori that the Town Council approve the petition of Oceanside Development LLC to amend the zoning Town of Winthrop zoning map to include 60 Herman Street Winthrop within the SDOD zoning, but to take any other action relative thereto. Motion by Council Boncori. Is there a second? Second. Second by Council of Terry. Discussion on the motion. Council President. Yes, Council Brown. Um, I'd like to say that it was a very difficult decision for me to make, come to. Council, uh, Mr. Lenz is a very persuasive speaker and uh, did a great job presenting. A very good job, very, very good job. And uh, he should be commended on that. But uh, I have to think about uh, the transition in government from town meeting to town council. And some of the <coughs> concerns that, that people had at the time was a, uh, a lack of voice. They felt that we went to a council form of government, they wouldn't be heard. And uh, in the past week, is, is I've had I've taken several calls today. Uh, someone came by my house last night. Um, I still have a petition signed by 29 people in the neighborhood that uh, say that they do not want it to go into an SDOD. That being said, I feel that I have to represent the people in my precinct and I have to vote against this. Thank you. Any further discussion on the motion? Seeing none, we'll move to a vote. I'm going to ask for a roll call vote. This vote requires a two-third majority of the council, not just a two-third majority of those voting. So it takes six positive votes for this motion to pass. Councilor, I mean, Council Clerk Crisp, would you call it? Councilor Sanford. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> 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 I'm going to vote no. Council Boncori. I think it doesn't make a difference what anybody votes then, but we passed the SDOD back some time ago so we could develop problem properties. This is a problem property that needs to be developed. I think these gentlemen have done a great job with other projects that they had. I think that they have gone over and above. We've all gone over and above listening to the neighbors. The uh, We've had so many open hearings. I, I know that I've had two uh, as the chairman of, of the public safety, as the chairman of the rules in joint meeting with public safety. And we've heard all the concerns of the people involved. And it bothers me because Many of the opponents are very close friends of mine that I've grown up with all my life. But I feel that the right thing for this town at this time is to allow this SDOD to get this building cleaned up and in good shape. Uh, 
to, to make it an attractive piece of property rather than a fire trap nuisance that it is. I don't want to see a church going in there and I don't want to see it being two huge apartments with people just gang living in. And uh, I vote yes for this. Council Verone? No. Councilor Terry? <clears throat> well, I think, I think it's prudent of us to take the advice out of weigh very heavily the advice of the planning board which voted unanimously for this um, and I, I concur with Councilor Boncori on I would like to see it developed in a way that's prudent and I think these gentlemen have proven that they have a track record of doing that um, and I also look at the possibility of it remaining a house of worship or a performing arts center which to me is more traffic and more problems <coughs> um, I am voting yes Council Boyajan. Um, I'm going to vote uh, no out of similar concerns to Councilor Verone in regards to representing the people of his district and uh, what they want in that area. Council Del Vento. Um, normally, I, I really try to defer to the precinct councilor for, uh, for guidance um, on this. Um, the other situation we do have to look at is the condition of the, the structure of what's there. Um, <coughs> I am torn, but I, I do think, and there are some serious, serious issues revolving around parking and around the buildability of the parking lot. Um, but that being said, the planning board can't execute anything if they can't get parking in there um, to accommodate. So I, I'm, I am going to vote yes um, because I firmly I think that the planning board is going to go along. Um, if that parking can't be established, it can't be. They can't get any units in there, so that's going to be a requirement. Councilor Callum. Um, in order to uh, you know. Um, There's a perception out there because I sell real estate and I'm in the real estate business that everyone seems to think that I would have a personal gain in approving this property. And um, I have not had any actual personal real estate dealings with the developer and I do feel that they do an excellent job. I have to say, um, if you do see some of the property that they rehab, it's really, really very, very nice. Uh, at our March 30th meeting, however, I made a, a statement that night and I said I was going to recuse myself from voting and I feel I should stick with that, so I am going to recuse my vote. Vice President Mayo. One of the most disappointing parts of my entire time in Winthrop was how I felt the Highlands was handled during the building of the uh, condominiums, which put 450 units and almost 1,000 cars in my neighborhood, and I'm very, very sensitive about that um, for those people that come from this neighborhood. Um, it's 40 years now, and I, it still burns me the same way as it did when it happened, and I felt the town let us down so I find myself in a very unusual position of having to look at this situation in this time and I've sat through all of your meetings and I've been through some of their properties and um, I think the planning board is the best place for this because it will give you folks the opportunity to sit there and um, give your thoughts on um, what goes on and how it's being built and I was also um, I thought four units was acceptable. I've now seen how they've structured the five. And I think through the discussion with the architects and the uh, functional resources, the attorneys and the architects on the planning board, that this is the best place. And I will vote yes, support. President Gill. Yes, my vote is academic at this point. Right. <laughs> <laughs> However, um, Given the situation that we have here and given my respect for the planning board and the, the decision to, uh, to move forward on this, but even more so their, their track record over the last three major projects that have gone on in town and the way that they have maintained the, the integrity of those projects from day one through the, through the uh, completion, 
Um, again, I, I have a great deal of respect for them. I have a great deal of confidence that they would do um, the right thing. Um, I will vote yes, although my vote at this point is academic. Yeah. Council President, well, yeah, uh, what terms or reconsiderations could I make at this point, if any? The rule for, con for reconsideration is that someone from the prevailing side has to ask for the reconsideration. It must be done at the same meeting or the following meeting. However, this particular petition gives one more opportunity. The, some things you have to wait two years if you don't reconsider at the proper time. The ruling that I've gotten from, the, from our town council, the S town attorney, is that should this, be, should this uh, request be voted no, the petitioner can then start the process all over again without having to wait two years. So should this be voted down tonight, then Mr. Linz could tomorrow petition the council who would then refer it to, and I'm not looking for audience hand, head shakes, I'm just answering the question of the council who has asked what's the procedure. Yeah. So the procedure is someone from the prevailing side, that would be the nose, could ask for reconsideration. It would have to be reconsidered either tonight or at the next council meeting. Mm -hmm. So in order to change your vote, if I decided to make a change on my vote, what would have to happen? You would have to ask for reconsideration. Okay. And then the council would vote yes or no for the reconsideration. Mm -hmm. I'd like to ask that someone recommend to reconsider. Okay, we have a motion from Council of um, Sanford to reconsider the previous vote. Is there a second? Mr. President, just a, a point of order on you. I'm just a little tad confused. And Pardon me? I can't hear you. I'm just a tad confused. I just want to make sure this, this goes down the right way if it's going to happen. Um, the prevailing side, the majority of the votes is, I, I don't know how that would, I'm, I'm looking to the town manager for, for guidance or somebody for, yeah, on a reconsideration. It, although it didn't pass, right. the majority of the votes right. cast were yes. Right. So That's correct, but it didn't prevail. Okay, I wasn't sure if the, well, the was majority of prevailing was actually <laughs> negative vote. Um, so in this case, whoever the prevailing side is, in this case, one of the three who voted no, would have to make a motion to reconsider, and that would have to be seconded to be acknowledged. Right. And Council um, <coughs> Sanford made the motion. What I'm not clear on, maybe you can correct me. To reconsider, uh, maybe Phil is our rules. To reconsider, we have a motion to reconsider. Do we have a second? Can I can I make a second? Second by yeah. council. Yeah. Second by council. Cal. Yeah. Do we need a two-thirds vote, Phil, to reconsider? No, no just, no, just majority. majority. Okay. Yeah. All those in favor of reconsideration, no. please say aye. 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 Opposed? No. No. We have two that have voted no. We have seven who have voted. Positively, mm -hmm. the motion is now reconsidered. Council Sanford. Yeah, you know, I, I've been on vacation and I've, I've missed a couple of the meetings. Upon hearing some of the uh, some of the folks who spoke in favor and seen some of the projects, upon talking to some of the neighbors who have, I have talked to, and taking into consideration and respect both councilors at large and Paul Brown, who represents the neighborhood. Um, and taking into consideration that this goes forward to the planning board, I'd like to at least have that opportunity uh, there. Uh, the neighbors will have an opportunity to speak at the planning board hearing. Um, I'm not necessarily in favor of as many units, but we don't have the opportunity to vote for how many units are here. So I'd like to see it at least go forward to the planning board at this point in time. I'd like to, uh, to make my uh, no vote a yes. Is there any discuss further discussion on the reconsideration? We are now reconsidering the, the motion that the Town Council approve the petition of Ocean City Development, LLC, to amend the Town of Winthrop zoning map so as to include 60 Herman Street, Winthrop, within the SDOD zoning. Take any any other action relative thereto. Council Clerk. Voting again? Yes. Council Callahan? Yes. Do we do someone still the same? Okay. Yes. Council Sanford? Yes. Council Boncori? Yes. Council Barone? No. Councilor Terry? Yes. Council Bayajan? No. Council Delvento? Yes. Vice President Mayo? Yes. President Gill? Yes. There being six votes in the affirmative, the motion is passed.
Council President, yeah. uh, I believe the law is a three-quarters vote. It would require seven votes to pass. According to Town Council and according to Chapter 40, it's two-thirds, six chapter, votes. Chapter, I, I, I disagree. I, I disagree. If the town I'll council rule at six votes if it needs to be reconsidered at a future time. The, uh, the ruling that I've gotten from Town Council is six votes, two-thirds of the council, not two-thirds of those voting. Course. Mr. McKenna, do you have your, your issue? If I could just yep. explore the issue. Your issue is you're referring to the petition that was signed yes. and therefore demanding 70% uh, election. 75%. Election. 75%. 75 rather, percent election. What's the, oh, you're not referring to the vote per se? You're ref I didn't understand state what you law. meant. State yeah. law, the state law uh, with regard to the SDOD. Mm -hmm. the, the zoning, uh, if there's a petition, uh, and I'm I'm not as well briefed as I should be, but forgive me. But my, my understanding is if the petition is valid and has been it declared has been by the clerks as certified with 10%, uh, I believe, of the um, affected area, um, and those sort of signatures are certified, that raises the bar on the vote of how many required to vote on this as, as, a, as a matter of procedure. And so... Um, I would ask that the council consider put, hitting the pause button and, and we get a, an opinion of council on the issue if that, in fact, is a, a legitimate uh, complaint. Given that situation procedurally, um, when you said petition, Council Verón, I, I apologize. I thought you meant the petition by council, uh, by uh, yeah. Attorney Linz. That was the petition <coughs> to do this. You're talking about a petition that was saying, signed by neighbors. That's correct. That's a separate thing. Okay. Procedurally, the vote has been taken, and I guess the process would be that, I don't know. Tell me what's no, the process. You're correct. The vote has been taken. Now, now a complaint now is a alleged, challenge has been a made. challenge has been made. Right. And so I think we can go back. You may have to repost this council to clarify the issue. Given uh, that a challenge has been made, um, is it appropriate to post it to post this again for the next meeting for confirmatory vote? Does that work? If it properly falls under the notice provisions of open meeting, I believe you could continue the matter until such time as you're ready to vote on it. Councilor Boncori, what do you have an opinion on this uh, as as to how do we handle this at this point? We've made a vote. The chat. The vote has been challenged. The, the issue, and I think we have to get cleared, is because there was one recusal. Yeah. Before, you, you, if two votes were a no, it would pass. It would automatically pass right. seven. Right. But because of the recusal, I think it's a, a question and an issue as to whether it's the, the three quarters or two thirds. So I think we should get a, we, even though we have three attorneys in that room, so I think we should That's get a ruling have three from attorneys. our own. get all confused. Right. I think we should get a ruling from our own attorney right. that will cover us if there was right. a lawsuit. Okay, I so would I, say that we, we have had a challenge. The motion has passed. We've had a challenge. We will confirm at the next uh, council meeting. Um, we will put it on the agenda for the next council meeting, and we will affirm the vote based upon our uh, advice by town council. Did you have a question? one very quick comment just for the record? Um, obviously, I'm going to preserve my right to object to the procedural defect to the extent that uh, prejudices the developer's rights. But more importantly, uh, we did put on the record previously that uh, we did object to the petition as well. Um, I know that the petition was received. I don't know that we've ever seen or know if the council's been presented with the certification by the town clerk, but we res preserve our right to object to the petition as well. By the petition, you're referring to the neighborhood petition, right. not your own yes. petition. Yep. I, I have a copy of the certified petition. We still object to it. Um, and we, we also have the guidelines of, of um, distance from the property type of thing? Mm -hmm. Okay. That was all taken into So account. given that, uh, Council, if you would uh, forward that, would you check that yes, out for us, Mr. McKenna? Yes, I will. Forward that uh, certified petition to Mr. McKenna, determine um, what needs to be done, and at the next meeting, we will clarify and we will, if necessary, re vote. Any further comments on that? Moving on with yeah. Councilor Employee Reviews. Um, could I have a motion? The issue has been I'm decided. Sorry. 
the case is Kubiak, so that you can give her a reference to it. Okay, Kubiak. Kubiak. That's the case on the neighborhood. Yeah, the Chicopee, yeah. yeah. But the question is, is, is the petition valid? And have some of them already withdrawn their names because of the other two meetings? So I don't know if the petition holds up. That's part of the reason why. I'm not going to give an opinion. Right. Okay. So yeah, I don't want to give an opinion. No. Not <laughs> okay. so and I don't want to either. <laughs> okay. So basically what we've done, we voted it, and we're going to bring it up at the next meeting to either confirm it or revote it. Yeah. And, and Jim, would you check with her? Is it yep. proper to revote it, or does this vote tonight count as the final vote? Right. Right. Yeah. Because if this vote tonight counts, it, yeah, this probably does count as the final vote. But yep. 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 <coughs> or if you can ask for reconsideration yet again. Right, that's, that's true. Yeah, that's the next meeting we right. can do that. Yeah, right. Because, I mean, did we vote under false you know, that's right. intentions? Exactly. Uh, and not that I'm looking to write in a possibility. That would be the We so could always get paid for. Why would we do that? Just to make sure we can still reconsider. No, it's okay to reconsider at the next meeting, okay. as long as it's the next meeting, not, the, not two meetings away. Correct, Mr. McGill? Yes. Okay. Moving on, can we just have a motion to approve, um, to accept Mr. Letieri's report from the Committee on Committees? Motion to approve. Motion by Council Boyage and seconded by? Yep. Council Letieri, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Aye. Cemetery transfer. I move by, count, uh, request by Councilor James McKenna. Now, Manager Councilor James McKenna, I approve that the, move that the Council authorize the transfer of $30,000. From the sale of lots and graves, Fund 584, to fund road repair at the Belle Isle Cemetery, I take any action relative thereto. Any discussion on the motion? Mr. President, that was heard by the Finance Committee and was moved forward with a positive recommendation. Okay, Finance Committee has moved forward with a positive recommendation, so there's no second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. 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 Thank you. Motion by Vice President Mail to request that the town manager develop a plan to enable the town clerk's office to provide digital documentation management services for citizens beginning July 1. <coughs> Included in this request is funding for up to $15,000 for the implementation of the appropriate software, installation, training to come from the council reserve or take any action relative thereto. Councilor Materi uh, Council Del Vasco, could you just repeat your Mr. President, the, the Finance Committee ran that. That was refer, um, referred back to the maker of the motion for some clarification where the town, it's the town manager to the town clerk, um, the town clerk's under us, and if, maybe you can sit with the town manager and um, work on how that, how that would work um, motion-wise, because it would also require a second vote for the actual funds transfer. Um, and we'd be holding the council liable to, to make an affirmative vote at a future at a future time. Okay, so we have a motion that uh, has come out of finance with the re, re, to be referred back to the maker of the motion. On the motion, as presented by Councilor Mail, do we have a second? Huh? What are we second? Wait, we? Can we have a motion made by Councilor Mail that says the motion is made to request the town manager to develop a plan to enable the town clerk's office to provide digital document management services to citizens beginning July 1, 2015. Included in the request is a funding. For, let me finish reading the motion, please. Including in this request is a funding of up to fifteen thousand dollars for the implementation of appropriate software installation and training. Come from the town town council reserve. Take any action relative there too. Do we have a second? I will second. Seconded by Councilor Vaughan. Mr. President. Mr. Uh, Councilor Dovan. Just a point of order that we, um, the Finance Committee referred it back because it felt the motion was um, inappropriate and inconsistent with the guidelines of the Charter as to how it was written. And um, at this time, we've asked that it be considered. Um, an out of order motion as it's not as it as the first part of the motion requires a second vote of the firm for the actual funding transfer in the council at this point would be voting that something that in the future would have to require an affirmative vote again and so the future council responsible to make it um, a positive vote on that you know to implement it 
So just ask. Um, okay. Given, given that, right? I thought one to simplify it. Shouldn't it be coming from the town manager yes. versus mm -hmm. a counselor? Yes. Right. So that, that that's where our issue is. We discuss Council on this. Or we yeah, go ahead. It's a motion. So personally, I think in the three minutes that it was discussed, it left a lot for my taste there. Um, I'd be happy to make a motion to take the funding out. In which case, it wouldn't have to go to finance. And in which case, I don't see where it would be any different than any other policy decision. And that is simply to ask the town manager to come up with a plan to enable us to move digital documentation. Right now, we have something like $25,000 a year that we're spending to correct and mitigate our document policies in the past, primarily because that's how it was handled. But at the same time, we are not turning off a leaky faucet. Every day we continue to make more documents. And every day we will, at one point, have to pay to have those documents digitized. I have met with individuals. The clerk has met with individuals. The town council president has been involved in the discussion. And we have seen an easy to install type of system that would enable us to go off and stop, in a sense, the bleeding. You wouldn't fix a leak in the pipes by putting a bucket underneath it. You would fix the pipe. We have a broken pipe. We continue to create digital, we create, we continue to create paper documents. So I would, <coughs> I would amend my motion to take off, included as the requesting for funds, and allow the motion to stand as the first sentence. So you want to make it a motion? I guess I'm looking at this motion. motion, and I think that this is a, an administrative uh, responsibility. I think Mr. McKenna It's a policy this, decision. Clearly a policy. I think it's an administrative decision, and I'm going to rule a motion out of order. Moving on to the next. Additional storm damage, Stephen, did you have a brief report on that? Yes, I did. Um, I've got, since last meeting, uh, you know, thankfully, you, you voted in the 20,000 for the temporary pothole repair. We've got a thorough assessment of, of the road and, and, and the storm damage uh, on the roadways. I've identified approximately $150,000 worth of um, damage to the roadways is beyond simple potholes. Uh, uh, with the 41000 that we've gotten from the, from the state for the uh, rapid recovery money uh, in your 20000 it still puts us around $100,000 short on, uh, on the grind and overlay needs for, 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 for uh, many, many areas in town. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping the council will, will consider um, bumping up that initial $20,000. Uh, also wanted to address the, the, the fields. We, we did uh, we speak to what was needed to, to, to address the fields. Uh, we're going to need loom, we're going to need seed. Coming to the end of fiscal year, my budget is, is extremely tight uh, on the highway side. Um, I'm hoping that you will also consider uh, $5,000 for, for seed and, and, and loom to restore Ingleside and Veterans Field. Mr. McKenna, your feelings on how to deal with this? Would you want to prepare a motion for us for the next yes, meeting? Yes, I would. Uh, yes. Is time-wise, is that if we, if we present it at the next meeting, then we're going to have to advertise it, yes, and then we're we going to have to have another? Are we yes. okay with that? Well, uh, you know, um, we'll make do for the time being and follow the procedures as, as, as necessary. So but yes, we, as long as we can supplement back to those accounts, Mr. we should be all right. Yeah. So, so it would actually be a motion on the 21st, which wouldn't be voted until yeah, the first meeting in May. First meeting in May yeah. Does that work? That, that would work, okay. yeah. Mr. President? Okay. Yes, Council. Can I ask, um, if you, uh, <coughs> we talked about two, two diff really big, different things. Um, the major, some major um, street and sidewalk type work uh, repair. But also, can we look at maybe splitting them out um, and some money, the, the parks and fence money? Maybe it can be a smaller amount to get going first on. We're going to have to advertise the second component. So we'll maybe we'll split it, it up to yeah. two motions yeah. so that we can So we can move on the first and, and the second would take two meetings. Yeah. 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 
Thank you. Say that again. Well, I think the council is suggesting we come under the twenty-five thousand dollars threshold to, and 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 well, move forward on you know the parks aspect of the yeah. of the motion as okay. quickly as we can. So yeah. we can we can do that. At we the don't next have to advertise it. And, yeah. We won't have to advertise it no. in the center of the twenty-five. Right. Okay. Very good. So you you're thinking you're going to need 25 plus 100, so we'll uh, 24, no. No. 25 plus 100, correct? No. 25 for the parks. Well, whatever the numbers were going to. No. I thought it was well, five. Five thousand. Five thousand. Oh, okay. 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 Question. Put some money in council that's here. Well, well, this I think is kind of. time, council that's here. Kind of immediate attention. So we work them. So present motions that fit within the framework of well, because earlier in your presentation you had said in the next couple of weeks we're going to work on Ingleside Park. Now, if that's considered an emergency motion for five grand to get that started, I would like to ask the council to waive the rules to pass that so Stephen can get going with that. Motion by Council Lettieri to waive the rule. Second, I believe it's two C, and um, move forward. Second, okay. Second by Council Boyajian. All those in favor of waiving the rule? Hold on. Question. Oh, hold on, we're yeah. going to just waive the rule first and then we'll get to the motion. Well, the question is on waiving the rule. Right. Um, what constitutes an emergency? It's not an emergency. If any council yes. requests it. Okay. No, uh, uh, it, it, it requires it that it's an emergency for public safety and it is because it's a danger and a hazard. I'm fine. To the I'm kids for it anyway. I just okay. Want to. All those in favor of waiving the rule say aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Um, on the motion, well, first I'd like to clarify a number first. If maybe Stephen can just give us some more background on. Uh, are you comfortable with that? Number? I'm comfortable with the number. I do want to be clear, though, that the, the, the initial work is going to start on Veterans Field. It's, it, it's, it's in a drier condition to be able to start working on uh, probably next week. Ingleside Park uh, will still require uh, a little bit longer to, to dry out. It's, it's, it's very much saturated, and the, the loom isn't going to. Just going to turn to mud. That's but is the five thousand going to cover the 5, both? Five thousand will cover both. But it just won't. It will be veterans field first. It'll be veterans. But field. it will be for the both field. That's correct. That's fine. Yes. Okay. So, um, Council Latieri has made a motion to tra to uh, transfer five thousand. Do you have a source you want to come from? Council well, we do ask for reserve. At this reserve. Point. From Council Reserve. So yes. transfer five thousand from Council Reserve. I, I like to amend it to eight thousand dollars, and I know there's going to be some emergency fence issues. And we fencing is critical in these parks, so I saw a, a I'd like very to. In Crest Ave, there's a broken uh, fence that's pretty. I don't uh, want any kids getting bad. hurt um, yeah. in the interim. <coughs> so okay, do, procedurally, uh, Council of the had made a motion for five thousand. Did we have a second on that? I seconded it. Council by con seconded by Council of Boyajian. We now have an amendment to the motion instead of five thousand by by Council uh, Dovento to make it eight thousand. Do we have a second to the amendment? Second. Second by Councilor Barone. All those in favor of the motion of the amendment say aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. All in favor of the motion as amended to appropriate, to transfer $8,000 from Council Reserve for the purpose of restoring parks. Any discussion on the motion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you. Councilor Yes, Councilor. Excuse me. I, I'm not feeling well. I have to okay. step up. Thank you. Um, I had put in a, a, a response, a draft response <coughs> to the planning board regarding the Somerset Avenue project. Um, I'm sure you've all had a chance to review it. If, um, if there's no question um, or any suggestion on it, I'm just going to forward that to the um, planning board. Moving on. Hold on one second here. Is that, may I ask, is that yeah. responsive okay to send yeah. out? Yeah, if there's no, if there's no uh, objection, then, uh, and I see no objection, so if you'll go ahead and prepare that and I'll sign it. New business. Um, Council of Lettieri, I move that per the town of Winthrop, section 10.04.02, that the town council authorized a temporary closing of Main Street Mason Street to Cross Street from June 1 to December 31, 2015 for Middle High School construction or take any other action relative there too. We did have a public hearing on that tonight. Is there any, is there a second to Council of motion? Yeah, second the motion second is by the uh, Public Safety Committee. Se okay, because coming out of, seconded by the Public Safety Committee. Any discussion on the motion? If not, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Tune in. Oh, did somebody have a discussion? Yes, Councilor. Sorry. Mayfair. 
Did you have discussion? No, it was um, no. There's just that clarification on the June. writing. It's it's missed. It says June. It should be May. May first. Yeah. Okay. So just a typo. On just the a correction on the that it should say May first to December thirty first. Correct. Yes. So I will reread the motion that the author that the town. Per the Code of Town and Winter Section 10.04.02, that the Town Council authorized the temporary closing of Main Street, Payson Street to Cross Street from May 1st to December 31st for middle high school construction or take any other action relative thereto. The motion was made by Council Materi, seconded by Council of Committee. Callum. Yeah, All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you. Did we vote at the special meeting last week to extend the construction hours? I thought we did. Well, mm -hmm. we voted mm -hmm. on the construction hours for the month of April. We were under the impression that it was a 10-day right. process. We did not, at the public safety meeting, however, it came up that that 10 days is not 10 consecutive days, and they would like it to extend through May 31st. It would still only be 10 to 12 days, but it would be sporadic throughout those two months. But and I think... I I think at the special meeting after no. we voted that, didn't we? No, no, because we had okay. a, that wasn't brought up at the special meeting after we voted through April 31st. We voted April 1st to April 31st. Just procedurally, I would because I know with the public safety meeting after uh, when Council Boncori made his um, recommendation, he also included a second recommendation to extend it to May 31st. So I would just like to procedurally but extend. I, but I, I had I to think leave before the. The other meeting, and I believe at the other meeting you had a, a meeting that you approved it. I'm pretty sure we did. Yeah. Um, Denise, can you look back in the middle? It was just till April 30th. Yeah. 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 The first time was to April 30th, but I thought that night that we. Let me just check the minutes here. You know what? Just to confirm it, I for Council Latiri, I move that the Code of Town of Winter. 8.020.060 that the town council authorized a temporary extension of construction working hours of the middle high school construction to May 31st. I'll take any other action relative there too. Any discussion? Uh, second, please. Second. Second, second. second by Council Boncori. Any discussion on the motion? If not, all those in favor say aye. Uh, aye. Opposed? It's unanimous. Motion by Council Latiri that the Town Council grant an easement authorizing National Grid to construct a line of underground conduit under Cross Street to the property line of the Winthrop Middle High School or take any other action relative thereto. This has been advertised for public hearing on the 21st of, Ap of April and um, I would suggest that we would vote on it at that time. So I'm just reading it into the record. Um, I don't think that there's any need to refer it out. I think we can just go ahead with the public hearing on the 21st and vote it on the 21st. Yeah. Jim? I've seen the easement. It's a fairly standard easement language for underground conduit across base and underneath and, and at the site. So, Okay. Council Boyer. I, I just, just for clarification, is there any need to refer that to public safety? Or well, that was my question. I don't, I don't think there is because it's just a, okay. it's a dig. And, yep. and, Okay, the next motion to, I'm going to refer the next four, three, four five. motions to finance. That is, a transfer of 7480 from site plan review offset receipt account 58752-59600 to the general fund to fund a special article known as the Center Business District Master Plan, and I will just refer that to finance. Second one. Uh, shouldn't that go to economic development soon? That's a good idea. No, I don't think so. Not at no. this point. No. Just a point. After, the, uh, after the study staff. So I'm just going to refer that one to finance. I'm also going to refer the 69.10 for the MWRA assistance for the flood map to finance. I'm going to refer uh, the council town manager contract settlements for the DPW to finance. I'm going to refer the 42,000 from recreational fund retained earnings to finance. And I'm referring the 2.8 finance the, for the replacement of aged water main and lead services to finance. We'll also schedule hearings as appropriate for, those, uh, Denise, yes, for the next meeting. Okay, moving on. 
I had made a response to the planning board regarding the center business district request. That's what we already voted on that. Mm -hmm. Very credit to the water raise. Motion to the Council of Vice President. I don't have a problem. I don't have a problem with the computer, but. Page 41. Page 41. Okay. Motion reads that I may have, this is by Vice President Mail, I hereby make a motion that for the 2015 voting season, each waterway licensee purchase shall be provided four ferry tickets to be used in this calendar year for no charge. Or take any other action relative there too. So I have a second. I'll second for discussion. Second of my council. Boyajin for second for a discussion. <laughs> Anybody like yes, council? Is the ferry going to be in the water this year? Yeah. Yeah. According, according to the reports, it's supposed to be here in okay. late August. Any other comments? I mean, I, I, we talked at the other at the finance meeting. That's something that's up for discussion about whether we should delay it or not. Till um, since we're going to miss the peak season anyways, and wait till the next year. So, I mean, but, but that's not the motion. Correct. And it doesn't. Relate no, it was just clarifying what council, yeah. council said. Was and again, just uh, for clarification, for my edification, yeah. what's the purpose of? So, the, if you don't mind, yeah. no, go ahead. the history of this is that recently we appropriated $29,000 from the waterway fee to support the ferry. The waterway fee is not dedicated to the ferry, and it is using money earmarked not for the, for the ferry. So, my feeling was since the people who bought waterway tickets, the waterway fees had contributed they should also benefit. They put the money up, they benefited. And I actually think it serves a better purpose. As a boat owner, I am not likely using the ferry, at least based on my past experience. I have my own boat, I choose to use that. Now, I understand the ferry is an enhanced item, and I have seen through meeting with the harbor management people, also boat owners, how interested they are in getting behind the deal. So I think this could be a very, very good marketing plan for several reasons. One, people would have the opportunity of using it that otherwise wouldn't use it. They're already voters. They may have some good ideas about it. And it would help take what is probably going to be a soft start and provide some uh, passengers for the ferry. And of course, there is um, not necessarily a charge other than lost revenue, but the lost revenue is like a coupon if I wasn't going to use it in the beginning, I, I wouldn't be using it, so there's no out-of-pocket expense. Given the fact that... Mr. President. Yeah, with, with all the respect to the council, and I, I, I please don't take this the wrong way. How would I? But <laughs> um, the fees are set by... At the, uh, uh, the fees are set by a vote at the recommendation of the town manager. The harbor, the harbor waterways rules and regulations are established and set. Wouldn't this be like a change in an ordinance as opposed to good intentions? I'm not saying those intentions aren't good, but do we have the ab ability to even do this um, with the way the free the with the voting of a fee structure? It's an open question. I, I, guess I, would, I would suggest CBC that we develop the tickets first. We, they're, they're, we haven't even printed them yet. I would submit that a lot of what we're talking about with the ferry is a very much an evolving conversation. 
I like the intent that the counselor is, is, is suggesting, but I think we need to prepare um, for what we are going to be doing this fall um, with some precision and to have you know, a, a schedule and tickets and the, va and the validation of those tickets and the value of those tickets <coughs> has not even been set. That has to be set by the council. We know what they are in theory, but you have not taken a vote yet to set that price, nor so the, the, the creation of the value hasn't occurred yet, okay? So that's all part of a plan that needs to get rolled out over the next few months. And at some point, you know, you can then look at offering discounted, uh, you know, uh, aspects of that. You may want to have a senior discount. You may want to have a ch child discount or a handicap discount. All of that is part of a suite of actions I would submit that you would take once you develop the plot, you know, and, and look at the program and bank and, and told it and Thank say, you. okay, this is what we want to do. So, Mr. Council Mayor. If not for the kind nature of the council to give away the voters' money, we wouldn't have this situation. But the fact is, no matter how you look at it, the ferry is not funded through the Harbor Way fee. And we've had this discussion and we've gone back and forth on it. I don't see anything in the ordinance that says the ferry should be funding it. They did it, and I think that they should be at least recognized for that. Given, given that philosophy, with all due respect, I feel that this motion would be in conflict with the motion and a vote that we took a couple of weeks ago that was dividing out the co the, the ferry uh, appropriation, dividing it out into three categories, one of which was what only a piece of which was the um, harbor management. That was defeated, and exactly the, the point that you're bringing up of, of where, where the funding for the ferry is coming from. I feel that this is in conflict with that motion. I don't, I don't, I don't see where it comes Rule that from. Right. Moving on. Senior tax relief program motion by Vice President Mayo that we reset the hours required for senior tax relief program to reflect the national minimum wage. Program will continue to provide a maximum of $750 tax credit per household or take any other action relative there too. Council Mayor, it's suggest if it's okay with you that we would call it the state the national or state minimum wage whichever is greater is that acceptable to you or would you rather just leave it the way it is it doesn't make a difference to me whatever seems to be the um, interest of the council is okay the motion is i would uh, make the original motion read then that the motion is made to reset the hours required for the senior tax relief program to reflect the national or state minimum wage, whichever is greater. The program I'll second the amendment. Pardon me? I'll second the amendment. Okay, amendment the, we need a motion for it. You just motion. made it. I you didn't make it, no. Oh, I thought you made it. Could you, I'll I'll make, you make, make the motion, the motion for, the for the amendment? The amendment. Council Sanford seconds the motion. Yep. All those in favor of the amendment say aye. 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 Opposed, it's unanimous. The main motion then reads, a motion is made to sit, reset the hours required for the senior tax relief, relief program to reflect the national or state minimum wage, whichever is greater, the program will continue to provide a maximum of $750 tax credit per household. I'll take any other direction relative there too. All those in favor of the motion as amended, say aye. 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 Opposed, it's unanimous. Councilor Sanford. I move that the town council proclaim April 25th, 2015, town of Winthrop Beautification Day. And again, it takes off with the TVs are encouraging uh, what the chamber has uh, done in the past with a uh, town of Winthrop Beautification Day, and it makes it an official day that we can have annually and uh, raise the awareness and try to get everybody uh, doing their part in cleaning up not only uh, our residential areas but our business districts also. Thank you very much. Any discussion? Is this an annual thing? No, just this. Is it just this? Yeah, I'd, yeah. I'd like to see it become annual. But. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, that's a good, good point. Then it should be like the third yeah. Thursday of every April or something, mm -hmm. you know, or whatever. The third Saturday. Yes, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and I didn't know what you wanted. I yeah, no, I'd like, to, I'd like to, well, it says this annual, but I'd like to see it becoming. Uh, it doesn't it, say it just It just says, it just says, it just says the 25th. Just this like year. Right. You want, let's, you want to amend it to say the fourth, the Saturday in April? The third, third Saturday? I don't know. Third Saturday in April. No, that's Fire Trek Beautification Day. What's that? Nothing. Just, sorry. 
Just you want to amend it to say that, 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 that <coughs> could be school vacation week I, somewhere in there because I think just the third. Yeah, so let's, let's just do it. Let's, let's do it. Let's just do it. Let's just do it. Let's just do it. All those in favor of the main motion two. Town Council proclaim April 25th, 2015, yeah, seconded by Council Letieri. Any discussion on the motion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Unanimous. Thank you. Uh, Rich, would you comment on the Board of Health smoking regulations that the... Um, so I guess one of the questions was, were we going to refer that to rules and ordinance? Anyways, the board, I thought that was one of the things you had talked about at the... To, to have them review the regulations well I think I think at this point all we have to do is announce that they have made the regulations and that uh, at some point they need to go to rules and ordinance to make we have to determine so, yeah so there have been modifications to the smoking laws and um, and, and you know they, they were voted on by the uh, the, the, the Board of Health um, l last week I think it was or last, and, and um, you know there were modifications made so we were thinking that that would probably be best referred to rules and ordinances or is that something we need to discuss as far as how do you feel Phil? I attended both Board of Health meetings and they, they finally passed two weeks ago a new rule mm -hmm. which they claim they can do and don't have to come to the council for right so you know, I don't think they want us to, to look at it no. Because if we look at it and we change it, what we say is binding rather than what they say. So, no, I think my, my only question was if they have the authority to make the rules and the rules conflict they, with something that's... They have authority to make rules, but n not if they conflict with something that's in the ordinance. <coughs> okay, so what's your well, suggestion at this point? So, you know... My suggestion, but I don't want to step on, on the Board of Health stores, is that it should go to rules and okay. it should be looked at by the rules and ordinance and it should be made into an ordinance and get rid of the ordinances that we have now affecting smoking and sale of tobacco. I because agree. That's how I initiated it because okay. we have some stuff in the rules that doesn't fit anymore, like that you could go to the smoking area or right. at the restaurant. Correct. But so the, the feeling of the Board of Health at the time was that they did not want they were going to make the rules. So they, they made the rules, but I, I think my intent was if they have the authority to make the rules, then they should come back and our charter, uh, our rules and ordinance should, our ordinance should be in, be in concert with that. As far as referring it for, to come back with a, a report, I, I don't think we needed to do that, but I think it, how do you feel about that? Do you, do you want it to refer it to you or yeah, just? Council President, can I? Hold on one second. Okay. I'm fine with it going to, okay. to, to rules. If there is a motion to send it there, you know, by the board of health, I, I, okay. I don't think we should overrule their intent. All right, so, okay. so we're going to leave it just that they have changed their rules. Their rules are going to be published on the, on the um, town website. Can, could we ask uh, town council for clarification on what, you know, what, what the um, Board of Health is able to do and versus, because I know that they've checked with the Department of Public Health and what they're, with, with the statutes that they are allowed to implement rules and things like that. Could we ask for the town council? Yes, they have. And we have gotten clarification on the issue. And it's essentially where this Board of Health believes there are local circumstances that require regulations more strenuous, strenuous, if you will, than, uh, if that's not the appropriate word, more uh, restricted, if you will, than state statute on a subject. They have jurisdiction to implement. They also have jurisdiction to implement reasonable rules and regulations as they re are relative to local conditions that are not otherwise spoken to in state law. Uh, in the issue of smoking, obviously there are state laws, so they need to abide by those parameters first. But they need to make findings that where there are local conditions that they require, you know, more or additional regulation, that they can promulgate them under their own authority, under, under the, under the uh, enabling, you know, statutes of boards of health. So I guess the question is, they have had, you, you've had the ruling that what they've done is yeah. proper, and, and I believe it's proper. My only recommendation was that if it's if what they're doing is in conflict with our rules and ordinances then we should 
reflect our rules in Auburn so they're not in contract. Yeah, naturally. Yeah. And we'd have so to that's, that's all I was saying with that. Not that we come back and yeah. overrule them or anything like that. So right. Council Bay Ash. So I guess that would be the point of clarification on that. So are we, their ruling would supersede and we would modify our ordinances to reflect what they no, ruled? No, or no, no, no. And oh, so that's my, Council I President, guess that's what I want Council to clarify. Yeah. The Board of Health has original jurisdiction over certain issues right. that really our ordinances don't have jurisdiction over relative right. to issues of health that are, that are original to and completely within the domain of the Board of Health. And those are the things they can issue regulations on, independent of the council, okay? Because their regulations, they're, they're processed through a different way, a procedure under, the, under their rules. And so, you know, they don't need to be in ordinance, for example. My only point was, if they have made a rule that's in conflict with our ordinances, their rule rules. Yes. However, precisely. Okay. doesn't it make sense if their rule rules that we have either take it out of our ordinances if it conflicts sure. or change our ordinance to reflect it. Sure. Correct. Right now our ordinances talk about, I believe, I'm pretty sure they talk about smoking areas in restaurants. In restaurants, in nursing homes. There are no smoking areas in restaurants. So I think that should, that's an example of that should be pulled out. Not, not um, changing our right. rules per se, but amending them to conform with. Yep. Make, make sense? So is that okay with you, Phil? That yeah. So we should we make will. a motion to that. No, we don't need to make a motion for that. I don't believe we need to make a motion. All of, do you think we need a motion, Phil? <laughs> Mr. President? I think a motion should come from the Board of Health right. asking okay. the council sure. to adopt their regulations. Right. Okay. Yeah. And then it would go to, to us and we would do it. That's how I feel it should be done. I understand okay. that. I would, I would, I would agree with you in the fact that you're, you're, it may be belts and suspenders, but it's really unnecessary and could continue the conflict you're debating. These issues are original to the Board of Health. They only need to be regulations adopted by the Board of Health and stand on their own. Right. Mr. 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 President? Yes. Could I ask that the Board of Health, what the recommendation from the, would be to the Board of Health is to refer to, to the Council for proper qualification? <coughs> so we'll do. Yep. at that point we can get what needs to be in, in, co in, in ordinances and take all the ordinances out that don't need to be. I will do that. Not to change it or to ratify it or whatever. Nick, send yes. me a little email on that. Which right. one? That's what I did. Okay. Moving on with the letter that I have, uh, the issue about the letter from the lottery request we talked about, we don't need any action on. So can I make, uh, and this is new business? Yes. Is this appropriate to, so again, uh, we just had Easter. I'd like to resurrect Craig's motion, though, on, um, uh, excuse me, the vice president's resurrect. motion. Resurrect. <laughs> <laughs> yes, to use that. No, 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 yeah, pun, intended. Uh, no pun intended. But. No, I, I really did think that um, Councilor, uh, Vice President Mayo's motion in regards to requesting the town manager to develop a plan to digitize the documents prospectively was, was, is an important thing that we should um, vote on uh, charging him to come up with a plan. I understand that, but I've ruled it in. A, it's, it's an administrative uh, it's situation. It's not a council situation. That town manager has, can look into that and get back to us. It's not, was the motion was Could you here. please look into that? Sure. Thank you. Okay. A um, couple of things uh, under public relations. Anybody have anything under yeah. public yeah. relations? Yeah. 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 Public, yeah. public yeah. comment. Sorry, Mary Lou. Oh, thank you. Um, it was very fitting that at the beginning of this meeting, the town manager introduced our new library director, who's going to start next week. Next week is National Library Week. Ooh, okay. And I'm here to invite all of you who haven't been to the library for a while to come back. Find your card, get a new card. But also I wanted to relate to you some programming that's taking place. We've had a long, hard winter. We've had patrons in and out of the library. People are reading up a storm. But we also have programming going on. And tomorrow night, the Waterfront Crew Poets are coming in to release their new book of collected poems, and that's at 6 p.m. in the Hazlet Room. Starting on Friday, Friday morning, there's an eight-week class on drawing starting. It's from 10.30 in the morning till noon. We have a new resident who's a frequent patron at the library. His name is Gerard Leary, and he teaches drawing. Just a, a hobby of his. He teaches the same class at the Lifelong Learning Institute at UMass Boston 
for a fee, but he's offering it for free to the town of Winthrop, and it's starting on Friday at 10.30. And if you're interested, please call the library at 846-1703 and sign up, or just show up on Friday morning. I'll introduce you to Mr. Leary. Um, and during National Library Week, we also have a programming on healthy eating that takes place once a month, and that's on Tuesday the 14th at 6 p.m., also in the Hazlet Room. And at your next meeting, I hope you let me speak about the scholarship committee because I'll have more inf information about that. You'd rather wait till next meeting for that? Yes. If Thank you, you. want to go on the first public comment, you don't have to wait for no, the second. <laughs> well, I was staying for school stuff too. So. Oh, okay. Mr. President, I'll just yes. give a public comment. Um, the school, the two days last week we did um, extended hours, there are Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, the cement um, cured uh, very quickly, quicker than we thought. Uh, they were done around midnight. Uh, they didn't have to go into four in the morning. Um, so those are two out of the ten days that are done. There was no complaints and no issues with that. Um, and just uh, as a citizen, I guess, uh, Council Mayor's uh, earlier a motion that was uh, set aside um, on, on the ferry and the, the boat is getting free tickets. Um, I think if we're going down and looking at that as a potential later on down the line, I think we have to do it very carefully of having a select group of people get the preferential treatment. Um, because I know his understanding in theory is they bellied up to 29,000. Um, I think as we stand there today, we all know enterprise accounts traditionally have always gone in the red. Um, to start this in August and say the first year we're going to be in the black is not realistic. So the enterprise accounts then taps into the general fund, which is then my tax dollars. Mm -hmm. So why shouldn't I be entitled to four free tickets? So as we go down that and look at these things. Like A, we have to be careful that we're not giving preferential treatment to a segment of the population that we have been investigated before on and um, that everyone gets treated fairly the same, that we all should get four tickets if anyone gets four tickets. Um, thank you for taking that into consideration. Thank you. Any further public comment? Jim? Oh, forgive me, but not under public comment, but I would ask the council actually take a vote so the record is clear on the, the $2.8 million financing to be referred to the Finance Committee. I need that as a matter of record for our bond councils who are eagle eyes on these matters and we want to make sure that they can trace every aspect even though the finance committee has it you want an official vote of the council to, to, to refer yeah just okay could i safe. have a motion 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 by council Latieri to refer second to refer the 2.8 <laughs> million dollar bond issue to finance second and seconded by council the del vento but yeah it's, it's going to be advertised anyway. mm -hmm. oh, no discussion on the motion. does it need to be roll call to do business no, no. All those, in, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Public relations. This is um, Autism Awareness Month. Autism is very close to my heart. My, uh, one of my grandchildren is autistic. And if you walk through the coming school, you'll see the, all the blue and white balloons. Um, if you drive by houses in town, you'll see lots of blue lights. If anybody needs a blue light, give me a call. I have extras. Um, uh, autism awareness is a, is a very special thing. Um, also, um, we talked about the Fabiano thing, uh, playground fundraiser earlier. Rich, did you want to comment on wellness awareness? Sure, I, I will. Um, so, um, the Department of um, Health, Public Health, and um, really Meredith Hurley has really been the backbone behind all of this. But Wellness Week starts uh, April 12th, which is Sunday. And that is where there's going to be a health and wellness expo at the, the high school gym from uh, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. There's also going to be the coming school PTOs sponsoring a 5K fun, uh, fun run uh, fundraiser as well. Um, and again, you can go on the website as well as you can contact the uh, health department with Meredith Hurley and she can give you more information, but there's flyers around town. On Monday... April 13th, uh, Dana Farber is going to be here with the mobile mammography van at the uh, Winthrop Senior Center, and, and they, they have the capacity to screen 30 women in the community for uh, mammograms, and so um, certainly contact Meredith Hurley. I know that they have a number of women lined up, but there's still room available for 
uh, more women in regards to things and what they do is they'll go through your insurance and things like that and make sure that everything's all set up and that the proper people will be notified with the results and everything. That's on Monday, April 13th. Wednesday, April 15th is going to be a, a really, um, it's actually really great, the community forum at Winthrop High School. The topic is actually substance abuse uh, in all ages, mental health awareness and resources. We have a guest speaker that I actually don't have right in front of me, but um, it's going to be very well attended. And I want to say that, and I don't have that here, but I, uh, no, I do have it here, sorry. Monday at the high school, which is actually one of the most exciting things um, as well, there's an alcohol and substance abuse awareness that um, Chris Herring, former Celtic and um, local <coughs> boy who um, is, is, um, has uh, been, has had um, his own bouts with su uh, substance abuse and he's going to be, he was sponsored by Viking Pride and Winthrop Charities. He's going to be talking at the high school uh, in the auditorium in regards to um, his experience and um, the dangers of everything and uh, the opiate abuse that's going on. Um, Wednesday, and then Wednesday it, to follow that up is going to be the larger community forum with, um, with uh, the mental health as well as substance abuse that's going on in town. And I think um, public safety is part of that as well, I believe. That's correct. Right. Okay. And is there anything else that, on that one particularly that you could elaborate that I'm kind of butchering? Just, yeah, uh, Mayor Curley and I met today with the Street Navigators and now on board. Um, the Street Navigators are going to play a very important role. Um, our vision for these Street Navigators uh, from the town manager's office down uh, through Mayor's office to my office is to connect them with drug court. Uh, there's no aftercare once you get that certificate from drug court. So we feel it's an important role that they have followed up uh, recovery coaches after they graduate that drug court to make sure uh, that they're doing the right thing and that they need to talk to somebody who is always there for them. And in the meantime, we'll be working with the fire department and the police department to give these um, recovery coaches some, some leads that are other people that we deal with on a daily basis, a weekly basis. Um, so all of that is going to be rolled out during this week as well. Terrific. Um, and we look forward to that. So if anyone needs any help, they can contact my office, Meredith's office with the recovery coaches. We'd be happy to jump start them. So just to wrap up, um, at the high school, I told you about Monday with Chris Heron speaking. There's, um, and I believe um, that uh, Mike Ruzioni is actually going to introduce him and uh, open things up. Tuesday, there's going to be bullying awareness. Wednesday is another mental health, um, going through that for the teenagers. Uh, Thursday is Pride, LBGTQ. Um, it's going to be an assembly in regards to that. And then Friday is a focus on physical health and community. So okay, it's you. a busy week. And just one other quickie, but the um, senior all, the uh, senior citizen uh, tax work off the deadline for that application is the 17th. Yeah. And just I forgot, uh, the Chamber of Commerce is holding a $10,000 dinner event on April 25th uh, from 7 to 9 at the Cottage Park Yacht Club. $35 uh, tickets are available through the Chamber, 617-846-9898. Okay. The tip-off tip the high school? Yes. Yeah. That is what date? April 28th, uh, April 28th is the tip-off day. That's for the... Um, the last piece of steel going in. Top off. Oh, yes, yes. The last top piece top of school top going... Top the last top piece top of steel. Top off. Top off. Um, going into the high school. There's going to be a celebration on the 28th at 1 o'clock um, at the high school. Uh, I just wanted to uh, clarify with the town manager. Is it posted on the website, the um, the wellness week? Is there a way to access like yeah, what's going to go it's on? It's on his it, management it is. letter, but we can double check and okay. make sure it, everything is there. I thought it was. I just yeah. wanted to make sure. Okay. Um, the council anticipates going into executive session to consider the purchase, exchange, or lease of real estate. Discussion of this matter in open session could have a detrimental effect. The matters to be discussed would be to consider the purchase, exchange, lease, or value of real estate. We will return from executive session for adjournment only. Can I have a motion to go into executive session? Motion. Motion by Council Delvento, seconded by Second. Seconded by Council Boyajian. Can we have a roll call vote? Council Gallup. Yes. Council Stanford. Yes. Council Bonfori. Yes. Council Varone. Yes. Councilor Terry? Yes. Councilor Voyagin? Yes. Councilor Demento? Yes. 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 Y